Are you tired of being overcharged and forced into paying a monthly subscription for your Mac and Windows software? Well, if you are, currently we're having a 50% off discount on all the latest Mac and Windows software, such as AutoCAD, SolidWorks, Photoshop, Microsoft Office, and much more. Our 50% off discount will be ending soon, so be sure to text us Need Software to 213-640-9738. That's 213-640-9738. We aim to please, so expect 24-7 technical support, the latest premium software, instant software links delivered to your email, and PayPal Buyer's Protection Guarantee. The white supremacists use division as a weapon, dividing our families, our wealth, rewarding traitors, murdering heroes. Yet we survived. We fought for our reparations. Now it's our turn to divide and administer God's power. I am Agent Nuria Sellers, a foundational black American. I promise that nothing will come between us. Buy the sci-fi novel, Nothing Will Come Between Us. Available January 22nd. Pre-order online today at Amazon and Google Play. Spirit of 1811 Publishing.com. Our story, our family. Are you living the life you deserve? Stop letting your finances ruin your success. Fix your credit now with Big Dream Solutions. In just a click, you can start changing your life for good. Our credit professionals analyzes your credit report and builds a strategy designed for your needs. No matter your goal, nothing is impossible. We get results. Schedule a consultation today and let us help you live your dreams. Big Dream Solutions. Take action now. Racism is the most powerful system on the planet, yet it is often perceived as the most taboo subject to discuss. World-renowned activist and best-selling author Tariq Nasheed takes on this challenge head-on in his new book, Foundational Black American Race Baiter. This is the most important book you will need in order to understand the mechanisms of systemic racism and how to counter this system. Get Foundational Black American Race Baiter now at Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com. Also get limited autographed collector's editions of the book at OfficialFBA.com. What's going on, guys? Welcome to a brand new episode of Tariq Radio. I am your gracious host, Tariq Nasheed. Glad to have everybody tuning in. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to chop up some great game on today's broadcast. And we're going to take some calls a little bit later in the broadcast. So that's going to be fun. A lot of stuff we got to talk about. So while everybody is piling in the room, ladies and gentlemen, let's take another quick commercial break. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, ladies and gentlemen, and don't you move a muscle, because we will be right back right here on Tariq Radio. Listen up, squares. You need to get the legendary book on game, The Art of Mackin, by author Tariq King Flex Nasheed, available on Amazon right now. Can you dig it? This book has been a bestseller for 20 years, Jack, and the New York Times called it a classic. That means it's out of sight. So this book ain't for no lames who ain't trying to learn the game. Jive turkeys. 
So if you're ready to stop slacking in your macking, get the Art of Macking book on Amazon and Barnes and Noble right now. Sucker. Rated PG. That stands for plenty of game. Jive chumps. Are you looking to start your own business? Millions of brothers have turned to eBay to escape the rat race. Become your own boss and get the Power Seller Research eBook. It's a comprehensive, step-by-step guide that explains how to start an eBay business. The website is PowerSellerResearch.com. Again, that's PowerSellerResearch.com. If you need $150,000 or more for any worthy business project, our friends at Wilshire Financial can help you out. Loan approvals are between 24 to 48 hours and funding within five days or less. On their site, their team of experts at Wilshire Financial will handle all of the details from start to finish. Give them a call at 702-747-5648. They have experts standing by to answer any questions. Again, Wilshire Financial, 702-747-5648. It's tax time again, so let the experts at Clark Pro Taxes make filing your taxes easy for you. They can prepare your taxes in person or virtually in all 50 states. Just snap a picture of your documents and leave the rest to them. Let Clark Pro Taxes prepare your personal or your business taxes. So get in touch with them right now at www.clarkprotaxes.com. Their calendars are open right now and they're pre-booking for the new tax season. That's Clark protaxes.com and follow them on Facebook at Clark Pro Taxes. Skyber Hospitality Tipping App, man. We bought it, bought it. This is Master P and told my No Limit soldiers check out the Skyber app, the hospitality app that anyone can customize, download, make a worker's account. You create the work. You heard me? Search Skyber service on Google Play in the App Store. Mm. Skyber.org. Listen, are you ashy as hell? Do you have dry, parched skin? Does your elbows look like elephant knees? If so, you want to get your skin from crusty to lovely, go to ashkicking.com to get all the lotions, lubricants, and body butters that you need to get your skin in order. They got all types of health and beauty products, everything you need. They got incense, things to make your house smell good, things to make you smell good. So again, go to ashkicking.com. Again, that's ashkicking.com. Bro, stop playing and start spraying. Leave an op on the ground where you stand. At all costs, yeah, make sure you protect it. Old goon juice, the formula been tested. You can defend yourself. If you find that you need a little help, gotta stay ready. Ain't no love in the street. Come yeah. straight, straight to the face, make them get weak. Yeah. Get it at ogoonjuice.com. If they thinking you slipping, then tell them to come get, get them some. If you packing this, you won't be lacking. A shot to the eye in them problems you having. Maximal strip, hit them haters on ground. So you can feel free when you out in the town. Ogoon juice. And don't forget a shirt, man. You gotta stay ready. That evil on lurk. Yeah. Let's get down to it. You are now tuned in to the Godfather of the game. Often imitated and always celebrated. Stop sloganary. Sloganary kills people. Hey yo, check this out. It's Tyreek Nasheed on Tyreek Radio. Let's go. Let's go. Be my goddamn summer law. Yeah. Here we go now. Yeah, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to Tariq Radio. I am your gracious host, Tariq Nasheed. Glad to have everybody in here. I need y'all to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, ladies and gentlemen. We are in here. Well, there's a lot of stuff we got to talk about. I was going to retitle the show talking about the immigration thing. The last couple of shows I've done, I've talked about the immigration thing, so that's why I didn't title it, but I'm going to get into it. Because as you probably know, I'm probably still trending on Twitter. I've been trending on Twitter since yesterday. And that hashtag Africans and African-Americans, that's trending right now. And they got my name under that, which I wasn't expecting that. But we had a, a long discussion on Twitter. In the Twitter spaces, we had some debates with 
us Foundation of Black Americans had debates with some black folks from the diaspora, particularly a lot of people from Nigeria. We were going back and forth with them for hours, literally damn near for the last 24 hours. Shout out to the family in Canada. Now we're gonna get into it later on. And you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna open up the phone lines because I want some of the people from the diaspora to call in on this broadcast and speak your piece. Say what you have to say because we need to open up this dialogue. This is a dialogue that we've needed to have for a long time. We're getting a lot of stuff off our chest. We're starting to see foundational black Americans are starting to really see how some of these folks feel about us. And there's a lot of projection going on. And we're we're very fair about the conversations. Now, shout out to my brother Mel. He had one of the, the rooms going yesterday. He was the one who started the room and I came in and people kind of attributed the room to me, but it was a brother named Mel who started the room. And it was a couple of other brothers who got a room going right now today. But shout out to Mel. And the room yesterday got up to like 27,000. It was like one of the most packed Twitter spaces that I've seen. I've not seen a Twitter space that packed. We were at 27,000 people live on Twitter space. So it was insane. But we're going to let's get into that later. There's so many other things I want to knock out very quickly. Then we'll get into that. Um, first thing I wouldn't get into, let's get right into the topic of today's broadcast. We're talking about the cost of clout. Now, for those who don't know, there's a blogger, a YouTuber named Tasha K. Tasha Kebby. Now, from what I understand, she's foundational black American, but her husband is Nigerian, I think. I know he's he's non FBA. That's where she gets the name from. But I understand she is FBA. So she's a blogger and I don't listen to too much of her stuff. I've seen certain things and, and I, I'm not going to disrespect. I don't have anything negative to say about her personally. I don't. So I'm not going to throw her under the bus because I really don't. I haven't watched too much of her stuff, but I understand how a lot of people get down on, on YouTube, period. See, with YouTube, it is a platform where people can get on here and kind of get clout by just saying anything, especially about public figures. You know, it happens to me all the time. A lot of people make videos just saying anything about me. 98% of it is never true, but they just say it in order to get clicked. So that's a thing on YouTube, just getting on YouTube and kind of saying anything, creating a blog, just saying anything for clicks. And Tasha, now some people said she had accurate information. I know she had some stuff about R. Kelly, some other court cases and, and jail cases. Sounds like, from what I understand, she had some hookup within law enforcement and she was giving allegedly sensitive information that could have only been received from somebody within law enforcement or the court system. So she had somebody feeding her certain information about certain folks. So right there, that's going to kind of put you on the radar if you don't have any other type of connections to shield you from that. Because I know there's certain court cases or whatever and stories that she broke. I don't want to mention certain things. And somebody said she lies about stuff. So, I, hey, hey, I don't. I, I, I'll i get into that. But even if you have sensitive information that was fed to you by some kind of inside source within law enforcement, you're, you're treading on dangerous waters because you don't have the kind of connections to kind of protect yourself from the investigations. I'm pretty sure there's some people investigating her, some higher ups investigating her on where she's getting that information from. You know, people look into stuff like that when people are given exclusives on cer- certain jail cases or court cases or criminal cases and people are given exclusives on it. But a lot of people say she lies about stuff. And this is the thing with Cardi B. She said a whole bunch of stuff allegedly about Cardi B. Well, not allegedly. I think it's online or she might have taken it down. Something about Cardi B has STDs or Cardi B. Allegedly, she said Cardi B had herpes. And I heard some stuff about her saying that if she kiss her daughter, the daughter's going to get it. Allegedly, I'm saying allegedly because this is stuff I heard, but obviously there was some credence to it because Cardi B was suing her. Cardi B sued Tasha K and Tasha K was going to try to ride the cloud out instead of saying, hey, let me just charge this to the game. She wrote it all the way to the wheels fell off. She went back and forth with Cardi, 
ended up going to court and from what I understand she went in court and basically admitted that she lied. They had her in court and she was admitting that she was lying. She admitted, admitted that she lied about Cardi B and Cardi B doesn't have a, a disease or whatever. So she admitted to lying on the stand. I think they had her and her husband on the stand and it was a train wreck from what I understand. Now, some people in the chat room says she embellishes a lot of stuff just to entertain. A lot of people on YouTube does this and this is the problem, YouTubers. See, this is going to set a precedent now. So a lot of people on YouTube, y'all just can't go barking at the mouth saying stuff just to get that YouTube clout. Because now a judgment came down. I think Tasha K, how much does she owe? Like three million now was a, a judgment for about 3.5 million I, from what I assume. So she has to cough up a bag, a bag that I know she doesn't have. And and that's the thing. A lot of people know that if they get sued, they ain't got the money to pay all this stuff. So they just like the clout. Some people will go in debt to get clout. Some people said it's one point two five million. Some people said it's four million. Some people said it's four million. But some people, man, are just so desperate for clout. You, there's Some people are just willing to go in debt for clout. There's a time when you're supposed to charge that to the game. Re remember when Strappy and some of their, their minions were trying to, they had some documents with all my social security numbers on it and they were putting it on, putting it on YouTube or, or Twitter. And we started investigating, we found out because I knew they had to have some kind of government job in order to get stuff with my social security number on it. So we found out one of those clowns was working for this, um, this government entity out there in Washington, D.C. And we called up and got her ass reprimanded. So people will, will risk their jobs and their livelihood and all types of things just for a little piece of damn clout. This clout chasing thing where you just throw it all away just for some clout, that ain't it. We got to do better than that. We have so many people who are attention deprived. They will do anything for some damn clout. And yeah, they said Cardi asked her to take it down first. And let's be clear with Cardi, you know, Cardi does a lot of slick shit or whatever. This is not me caping for Cardi because Cardi has said a lot of very questionable things. I'm just talking about the rules of the game. And this this would apply to anybody. Cardi B is just the stand in here for this particular situation. But YouTubers out here just running off at the mouth saying anything just for clicks. See, this is going to put you on notice. Y'all can't do that. This is why a lot of people, when they do that type of shit, they kind of hide their identities. But Tasha K got out here saying it with her full chest. Yeah, I said it and I wiped my ass with the subpoena. She's just clout chasing all the way down the line. And now it flipped on her. Now, Tasha K, she did a video and I'm going to do fair use. I'm going to play some of the video, her response to the lawsuit. And you can kind of tell deep down she's enjoying the clout. So she then gave a, a little um, statement and now she's trying to take the Claire Huxtable route. Uh, now listen to the, the statement she has here. Hold on one second. Listen to this. Hold on. He said, we called bluff against a machine that wanted to bully me for not wavering from my personal beliefs. A machine that has corporate interests to protect prostitution, drug use, promiscuity, and to glorify the violence that wrecks havoc on our society and in our neighborhood. Okay, so this is the part that's really funny style. Now, now this is the part that's really funny. Now, so now she's playing, she's giving a Cicely Tyson speech. Oh, they're after me. Oh Lord, still I rise. She's doing the Maya Angelos. Okay, no, Tasha. No, 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 Tasha. You no, 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 Tasha. You can't do that. Now she's trying to play the I'm the real victim. Oh, the black woman is the mule of the earth. Still, I rise like a butterfly. In my cocoon of white supremacy, I shall spread my wings and flutter to the halls and nest of justice. No, no, Tasha. No. Don't, don't give us the Maya Angelou Cicely Tyson speech or she was doing it for the sanctity of the black woman. Oh, stop. Don't do that. Just say, hey, I fucked up. I lied and I got caught out there. Come on. 
Come on, Tasha. Hold on. Let me play some more. She's doing the most. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Hold on. And to glorify. It's sold to our children oh, Lord. as the it factor. This machine, this thing, secured an extremely prejudicial verdict against myself and oh. my company. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. No, no, no. That's what you. Oh, no. Don't. And because this, this is the thing, from what I understand, don't she go after black folks too a lot? <laughs> See, that's my thing. If you didn't go after black folks, and some of y'all listen to her, she goes after black folks a lot, right? She goes after black people. So you can't do this thing when you go after black people and then try to do the still I rise speech. No, ma'am, you can't do that. It, no, we're not going to buy that. That's, that's just not going to work for us. Ma'am, you cannot do the still I rise speech. And did somebody, I heard somebody say that because she brags about her husband being non-FBA or something like that. Is that true? I, again, I'm asking questions. I'm not, because again, I don't want to slander no damn body and say something emphatically false. So um, from what I understand, don't she, somebody said that she has bragged about her husband being Nigerian and non-FBA and whoop de whoop So how true is that? Okay, hold on one second. Two of those. Okay, hold on one second. I'm my, hold on. Hold on, because we're doing a film shoot this weekend. Okay. Okay, hold on. I, okay, sorry about that. My film crew is texting me, talking about they need two damn generators. Okay. All right, so somebody says she does that a lot. He's from Mali. Okay, he's not from Nigeria. He's from Mali. Okay. So he's from Mali. Okay, got it, got it. But yeah, I heard that. I heard that she kind of brags about her husband, and he's not like a foundation black American man. He's not an American man. So she brags about him and the white lawyers. Okay. So yeah, she can't play that. Tasha, you can't do that. You can't sit up here and do all this gossiping and disparaging black folks. Allegedly, you can't sit here and, you know, just kind of throw people under the bus, throw black folks under the bus all the time. You can't do that. And then when you get caught out there with your lies, you want to show up, you showing up, you leave court like this. <laughs> She's leaving court like this now. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Damn it. Fighting, cussing. <laughs> Women with no clothes on. Gyrating all over on this land. No, you, you're not going to give us the Sicily. <laughs> Ma'am, you, you're not going to give us the Sicily Tyson speech. <laughs> I don't want to hear it, Tasha K. No, Lord, you can't be out here disparaging people and all of it. You get a you you get a a, a four million dollar bill, and now all these women's out here gyrating on this land. Oh, Lord, Lord, did her is was her husband teaching her some of them non FBA lies? Because niggas be lying like a motherfucker. She learned some non FBA lies from her husband. Lord, but anyway, but more power to you, Tasha K. I hope you get it together. I hope you get a little payment plan going on. Some people say she might try to file for bankruptcy or whatever, but Tasha, the cloud ain't worth it, sister. The cloud, it ain't worth it. This ain't nothing to ride to, to ruin your financial situation over this and your reputation. And not only that, again, this is setting a precedent now, which is cool. I don't have a problem with it because this will clean up some of the bullshit that we see on social media. You know, so it is what it is. Now, speaking of bullshit, y'all boy, Michael Radapore, and I pronounced that correctly, Radapore, family. Now, I've been telling you guys about all of these staged incidents out there in New York where they're sitting up here orchestrating these crimes where they're catching these crimes on camera so they can justify ultimately targeting black people. So they had Michael Rappaport, he was at some Rite Aid store and he just happened to, he claimed he caught somebody shoplifting. So I want you to watch this video. In the video, you act you don't actually see the person shoplifting anything, but you have Michael Rappaport giving his commentary when this person walks out the store. Now hold on, check this out, hold on, let me go here. Okay. Now look at this. Hold on. Let me make it bigger for the family. Hold on. 
Let me make it a little bit bigger. And he's doing all the yo, 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 word to the mother bullshit. Uh, hold on. Okay. Yo. Yo. I just watched this fucking dude. Look at this fucking guy. Walk in the fucking right aid, take a whole, this fucking guy right here, take a whole bunch of shit. Look at him. Okay, so, hold on. Okay, now that looks weird. That's very questionable to me because if you see in the video, the guy, the guy doesn't, he, he doesn't steal anything in the video. And I don't really take Michael Rappaport's word for it. And then the white media ran with it. Oh, they were all over the place with it. Michael Rappaport cat, catches a brazen shoplifter and the security guard didn't do anything. So they, they also made the security guard implicit in this alleged crime that we don't actually see. It looks very weird. It looks very, very weird. And it looks very, very staged. And he was, me and him, me and, Michael Rattapore were kind of going back and forth on it because I said on Twitter it looked staged. And he walked past the security, so it doesn't look like the guy actually stole anything. You didn't hear any kind of buzzers or anything go off. Usually, you know, they have buzzers and stuff like that. So what we see in the video is just a guy who walks past the security guard sees him. There was no threat. There was no danger. So there was no reason for the security guard to do anything. But when he walks out the store, Michael Rappaport goes into the whole yo, 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 look at this shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. That looks very questionable. And again, that plays into this whole narrative that, oh, we got to do look at all the crime. We're going to have to do something about the crime. And all of these black people are complicit in these crimes. You see, and, and all my New York family, my, my New York people, please be careful because right now, you know, they shot a cop in Harlem and um, they shot a couple of cops, cops in Harlem and they're like, oh, they're going to try to use that to justify all of these draconian policies towards black people out there. So I'm going to tell my people out there in New York, y'all need to start getting insurance, start getting insurance, life insurance, all of you start getting lawyers retained now. Some people say, hey, my money is funny. Hey, it's better safe than sorry. Start looking for lawyers, get lawyers retained, and also start getting some prepaid bail going on. Find you a bail bondsman, have a bail bondsman's name on deck just in case some people in your family get caught up. It's just better to, to be prepared ahead of time because we know it's going to go down. It's going to go down in New York. Let's be very clear. They're going to do stop and frisk on steroids, family. It's going to be stop and frisk on steroids, so you might as well start being prepared. We wait until the last minute to say, okay, damn, we need to do something. When we see it popping, we need to start doing things systematically to kind of look out for ourselves. So mentally, we will be prepared. All right? So start getting insurance and all of that stuff. I know, I know it sounds drab, but whatever. Start preparing. I talked about this in the book, Foundation of Black American Race Beta. We start. We got to start getting insurance. We got to start getting that popping. Because actually, if a lot of us start getting insurance, that will kind of dissipate a lot of these random killings. And go get the book, because I talk about that in the book. I talk about that real deep in the book. Um, What else is going on, man? So much stuff. And by the way, don't forget to get the, your Arrested Sussy shirts. Arrested Sussy shirts. Get your Arrested Sussy shirts at arrestedsussy.com. Um, right now, election season is popping. And they're talking about Biden. Now, they know that the Democrats are in trouble right now. The Democrats are in trouble. And what Biden is doing, they're going to start doing the symbolic bullshit because we're asking for tangibles and they really need us to support them. And we are not supporting the Democrats because they are not going to provide tangible. So what they're doing now, they're talking about Biden is going to pick a black female Supreme Court justice. So they're going to try to use this symbolic 
nothing burger that is intangible to kind of pacify us so that we can support the Democrats. They're making a big deal out of Biden getting the black female justice. That is a nothing burger. It means nothing, 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 nothing. Family, that has absolutely nothing to do with helping black people. That's not going to help us get no damn tangibles. It is a nothing burger. Family, we already got somebody black on the Supreme Court. Clarence damn Thomas. How has that worked for us in the last 30 something years? Family, how has that worked for us in the last 30 something years? And the, the, the women that they have, boy, if you look at some of the backgrounds, there's some bed wenching going on on a few of them. There's one, what's her name? Kajani, what is her name? Yeah, they got a bunch of Kamala Harris. Yeah, look at Kamala Harris. Okay, Kamala Harris was quote unquote black. How has Kamala Harris worked for us? We're not going for that where you're just going to hire a black face in a high place. We're not going to do that. We're not, we're not caring about tokenisms, putting a black person in a position where they can't do or don't want to do anything for us. Yeah, a lot of older black people are like, oh, good, that's a good thing. No, no, old Negroes, no, 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 no. Old Negroes don't count. This is a ploy for them to get black votes and we ain't going for it. We are not going for it, ladies and gentlemen. Voting for the Democrats at this point is suicidal. Voting for a damn nothing burger Supreme Court justice who ain't going to do a damn thing for black people who just happen to be black. They keep pointing out she's black. I want to know why you pointing that out and how is that going to help black people? Well, it's not. I mean, we she there for everybody. So what the hell you mean she's black? Why you keep pointing that out? If she's there for everybody and you're electing this person who's just going to help everybody, why in the hell are you keep reiterating the fact that she's black? What does that mean? It means nothing. Yeah, we get another Tammy the Mammy. Black faces in high places don't mean a damn mean a damn thing. And one of the women, what is it? What's her name? Where is she? One of these women right here. This is her. Um, what's her name? What's this woman's name right here? Hold on. Let me let me go back. Her name. What the hell is her name? Hold on. Let me go to my timeline here. What is this woman's name? Hold on one second. Let me find this woman's name again. Go through my timeline. Okay, right here. This woman's name right here. Her name is K Katanji. Katanji Brown Jackson. And this is her with her zaddy. He up here talking about happy loving day. I'm especially thankful to walking to be walking through life with a brilliant and compassionate partner who still takes my breath away. Made possible by the sacrifices of Richard and Mildred Loving. Oh, God. That's the loving case where that, that interracial couple, I think they went to the Supreme Court and they found it, they they were having their constitutional rights violated because they were not, they were arrested for getting married. And by the way, Mildred Loving was really a black Aboriginal person who was reclassified as black. And that was part of the case, by the way. The woman Mildred Loving, the black woman, was actually a a native aboriginal woman i don't like to say native american because when you say native american you think of the mongoloid looking native american so when i say aboriginal american we're usually talking about the native black people who are here with black phenotypes who were reclassified as black so it's heavy so yeah, imagine this person right here being the Supreme Supreme Court Justice. How is this going to work for us? Let's just keep it a buck. How is this woman right here with the divestment braids, how is that going to work for foundational black Americans? Th this is symbolic nothing burgers, dude. This is Kamala Harris times 10, and this is why they pick people like this. They know who to pick. Man, they screen these people. They vet these people like crazy. So they know if they get these people in office, they're not going to do anything to help foundation of black Americans. They understand this. They fully understand this. And see, here's the thing, family. We're talking about getting tangibles for foundation of black Americans. We're talking about getting reparations and other tangibles. Reparations, that's just the first step. We're going to be on this tangible wave for foundation of black Americans for a long time. And a lot of people feel a certain way about it. 
a lot of people are triggered by it. Now, like I said earlier, we were doing these Twitter spaces and boy, there were a lot of butt hurt people. First of all, they were upset because we have identified ourselves as foundational black American and they kept trying to push the no nigga. We are all African together, nigga. No, 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 no. Because even over there in your homeland, you guys have all of these divisive um, ethnic groups and you guys ain't on the same page. So y'all y'all don't look at us as the same ethnic group. We're all black in a global sense, but we are a specific distinctive ethnic group. We did, did, do the white men look at you differently? Uh, stop. It was, we had a lot of these redundant talking points because see, a lot of people want to latch on to us because when we talk about getting stuff for Foundation of Black Americans, every other group wants to latch on and get it. So when we talk about doing something for ourselves, oh, everybody starts having a hissy fit because now leech time is over. You can't get your leech on. And with the Twitter spaces that we were on, family, again, we were trending all over the place. And I think, let me look on there now. I think we're still trending now. If I look on there real quickly, hold on. Let me look on Twitter now because we've been trending. We've been trending since yesterday. And let me go on Twitter now. Hold on one second. Uh, let me see where are we at. Um, da -da -da -da. Hold on one second. Because my, first my name was trending all yesterday and all this morning. And then Africans and African-American was trending. Okay. Uh, okay. Now yeah, FBL. Okay. I don't see it right here. So we were having debates with people from the diaspora and the question we asked was why should foundation foundation of black Americans support immigration? We're talking about immigration in general, and we're going to get some calls in a minute. And by the way, the phone number is 818-850-5404. That is the number. Let's get some people in. Let me start opening the phone lines in a second. But the number is 818-850-5404. That is the number. And we were asking people, what benefit do foundational black Americans get? And nobody could answer that question because they fully, they understand that we don't really get any benefits from us supporting immigration. They were just, the, the attitude was like, why shouldn't you do it? You're supposed to help us. You're supposed to. You, the whole thing was this entitlement. You're supposed to. Because we all in this together. All right. The whole we all in this together talk. Uh, that was the consensus. Hold on, hold on. All right, hold on one second, caller. So yeah, the whole consensus was the whole we're all in this together, we're all in this together. And we kept pointing out, what about us? What about us looking out for what we need to get? And they were like, well, that's being divisive. Oh, that's being xenophobic. And boy, some of the international media they jumped on it and look at some of the stuff they were saying this is in um hold on let me show some of this earlier today on twitter some black americans seemingly warned africans to stop immigrating to their country now see how they flipped this and turned it into a big ass lie here's another one social media trends nigerians reacted to reek's rant against africans taking black americans jobs so that was another false straw man argument they kept trying to bring up that we were whining about them taking our damn jobs. That wasn't the argument. And what jobs are you taking? That's the question that we kept asking. Exactly what jobs are you taking? Because that was the narrative they kept trying to hang their hat on. We're so upset that you're taking our jobs. These jobs here, Uber Eats, we're not upset about anything. But let's get some people in here to speak. Two five three. What's on your mind? Who's calling? Hey, how's it going? This is Ben. Uh, yeah, man. I just I, I agree with everything you're saying, man. Long time listener, uh, ever since the Mac Lessons Radio, uh, and you know you sort of motivated me to, to you know get on my grind and you know graduate law school and do what I got to do. So you know, thank you for that. I love that. But I really, um, I, I really, uh, I really agree. You know, um, with everything you're saying. You know, it's not, it's not just. Um, it's not Africans coming over here taking um, American jobs. It's, it's America not providing opportunities and conduits for Black people to have quality employment. Right. Uh, and so we need tangible. We need we need money. We need you know all these nothing burgers that you that you speak of. That that's correct. We don't need you know black faces and and you know just a pat on the back. We need we need real economic empowerment. And you know that's that's not a fault of of African people. That's a fault of 
of the American government going back hundreds of years. So I, right. I, I really, I really sympathize and empathize everything you're saying. Much respect, man. Thank you for the call, bro. Let me get some other calls here. Yeah. All right. What? <laughs> God damn, it's loud. All right. What's up? Who's calling? Oh. It's Jonathan from Atlanta. What's up, Jonathan? How are you, sir? Doing all right, man. I was trying to chime in today earlier. <coughs> Excuse me. We got my FBA, man. Um, a lot of them, they just, they just not feeling us, man. You know, uh, we get a lot of ridicule from them. <clears throat> I was in a car shop a few months ago, uh, waiting to get my car fixed, and it was a brother there from Nigeria. I was looking at some marching band videos on my phone, and he was like, "What is that?" And I said, "It's HBCU." He goes on to say, why do you need HBCUs? And so I, I told him, you know, at one point in time, we couldn't go, go to these white schools, so we started our own basic, like they hit a rundown. And he started saying that that's divisive, and we don't need that, it's racist. And so I asked, I said, where you from? Cause he didn't sound like a black American to me. I'm like, yeah. where you from? He's like, I'm from Nigeria. I said, ah. So I broke down the context to him and all that good stuff, but he kept saying, man, immigrants built this country and this and that. And we sat in that place for about three hours breaking it down. We had a whole audience, you know, watching this because I couldn't let it slide. And I could yeah. tell that that brother, for a long time, he would meet black Americans and he was, he was just running down to them of, of why they wrong. He ran into somebody who could break it down exactly. to him. It's a very valid point. Mm. And um, I, I'm just tired of that, man. They, they do that to us a lot. They say, why would y'all need this? Why y'all need that? But I, I asked, I, I did ask him. I said, man, why are you over here? in this country. And he, he said the same thing he always said. You know, better opportunities. Who created those opportunities? And, and you know, Phil, I gave him a run now. He ain't had nothing to say. Real talk. But I appreciate the time, brother. I just wanted to say that. Much respect. Thank you, brother. All right, let's get some more yes, folks sir. in here. All right. What's up? Who's calling? Yes, um, it's Jerome. I live out here in um, St. Louis. You know, I'm from Jamaica. And, you know, I'm, I listen to you all the time and I'm thankful for the knowledge that you've given me. Yes, sir. You understand me? And you're right because at work, one time, I end up using the word, <laughs> I use the word bed wench. And I'm telling you, it's like a whole barrage of people fly down on me like as if I was wrong. You know what I'm saying? And everything that you've been saying is factual because one key thing that you point out to me as a foreigner, which is true, that I've started noticing was that these key positions that people get placed in when they leave overseas from the Caribbean, you know, Africa and so forth, they're not a benefit to... So you, you as a as a black American, you understand? Whenever I speak up in in regards to black American stride, it started with me in university. Like I was saying, you ever notice that when we come and we get like the little trinkets when we're going to school, we only get it because we are black. But they were supposed to be for the black Americans only, and they share it with us, and that became the big problem too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes, indeed. Man, yeah, and I noticed these. these Go ahead. Good, good, good talk, brother. Thank you so much. Let me get some more calls here. Thank you, brother. I'm trying to get as many calls as possible. All right. Hello. Hey, what's going on, brother? What's up, family? Who is this? This electron algorithm from Boston. What's going on, my bro? man? What's on your mind? Well, I'm gonna just break it down to you real quick. Um, I noticed that a lot of us say we want reparations, reparations. We want money, money, money. But I feel me being an African American, us asking. Uh, you know, money for from asking money them puts us at an underclass position. How so? Now, because cause it's like we're asking something from them, and we've been at beef for so long. But let me just say this real quick. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Wait. Asking from, okay, you're saying them. Them who? White Americans. Okay, well, that's the government. We, we're trying yeah, to get something government. from the government. The government. This is a government that we pay taxes to. So this is stuff that we're entitled okay. to. So it's not like we're asking for a damn handout. This is money that's owed to us. You understand? Yeah, I do. I do. But but let me just say this. Let me just put a little bit of um drop a quick gem. Now where are you? I where's your family? We... Where's your where's your family from? Because I hear an accent with you, brother. No, no, no. I'm from Boston. No, I'm no. Boston. I hear an accent, bro. I hear a Caribbean no accent. accent, brother. I swear, I smell jollof no. and oxtails right now. No, 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 no. What we need to do is focus on mathematics because mathematics is the universal language. And by asking for money, yeah, we all need money. But the, 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 the creators and the, the makers who created the financial system were all mathematicians. So Man, we got to promote that a little more so we Man. can be math Where did you get math, the, bro. Who, who told you they were mathematicians? 
people. They were not yeah. mathematicians, man. They came over here with guns. They came over here how with guns and guns? a code. Yeah, but how do you make guns? Dude. You got to measure the metal. Metal measure the steel. That's all mathematics. That's why they advanced. No, it's not. They advanced because they had a code. The Moors had the guns. The Moors were the ones who gave them the guns over in Spain and Italy. The Moors went over there to Italy around Venice and the Moors were showing them what's called the fire stick, and they picked up on that. You understand? Oh, okay. So, oh, yeah, they, they got that from black Moors. We, we had the guns, but we didn't use them to dominate people. They used the fire sticks for celebratory things. Also, they used the fire sticks to defend those Moorish castles. But when they started taking those fire sticks to Spain and, and parts of Italy, you had Italians like Beretta, who created the earliest gun manufacturing companies to use as weapons against people. And that's the oldest gun manufacturer in the world, an Italian named Beretta. They still sell Berettas to this very day. So we have to understand where all of this stuff comes from and start talking about well, it's all about uh, mathematics. No, man. It's all about people being on code, brother. Okay, one last thing. Go ahead, sir. Was this before uh, the Chinese um, used gunpowder? No, the, they were using gunpowder for a long time. And I think the Moors actually went into China and got fireworks and gunpowder. And then they brought that to other parts of Europe because there were the Moors on the Silk Road doing trade with Asia. So they were all doing trade with each other. Asians had fireworks. So wow. it just kind of the, the gun, as we know, it kind of evolved over centuries. So but again, we just need a code, brother. Okay. And I swear you don't sound like you FBA. I swear to God wow. you don't. brother. No, I I'm from Boston. I saw you at the um at the Strand Theater, and I bought your uh, Hidden Colors Five. I was there, and I, and I stood up in the audience wow. and I asked you some questions. I'm 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 you know I'm cool with uh, Callaway and them. Okay, there you go, my man. All right, thank you so much, brother. Let me get some more calls Bless. here. Okay, all right. all right. Let's get some more people in here. Hold on. Ah, that loud ass ring. What's up? Who's calling? Hey, how you doing, brother? What's this up, Dre? Calling. All right, Dre. Where you calling from, sir? Hey. I'm calling from New York, from Brooklyn. There you go. Now, where is your family from originally? Haiti or Jamaica? Oh, no, my family's originally from South Carolina. I'm oh, a foundation okay. of black America. There, my, there you go, my man. So what's on your mind? All right, so I, I heard a lot of the, uh, the Twitter space from yesterday, and I see that the Twitter space, they kept going to the same roundabout conversation, like a time-wasting conversation, where they were getting the, this narrative that they kept trying to frame in that black Americans are mad that they're taking the job. Exactly. That's and yeah, I, which is a con game. So That's a straw man. Yeah, it was this straw, this bad faith argument that we're upset that they're taking the jobs, and it was just so funny because we aren't mad that they're taking the jobs. They just saw that us asking this very serious question about what are they doing for black, what black, what immigrants are doing for black Americans. They took that and they kept switching it to this straw man argument. So it was just like. So I kept seeing this narrative, and that was the only way they could argue that point. Yes, sir. All right, let me get some. I want to get some. Thank you for the call, brother. I want to get some people from the diaspora Ooh. or some some. Ah, damn, I hate that loud ass sound. First gen or second gen immigrants. I would like for you guys to chime in here because there were people trying to get into the, the the Twitter space, and I would like for people to call in and speak your piece now. Who's calling? Ooh. Hello. Let's try this person. All right, hello. Hey, hello. Hey, what's up, brother? Hey, what's going on, King Flex? Okay, now, brother, are you are, are you an FBA or non FBA, brother? I'm non FBA. Okay, now where's your family from? Uh, my family's from Jamaica. I was born in Jamaica, but I moved here when I was six years old. There you so go. I kind of just grew up here. Yeah, I grew up in New Jersey, but I'm out here in Daytona Beach now. Just calling in to show love and just check in. Much respect, but let me. I'm gonna get some other calls. Okay, let me get some of the other calls. I hear babies and stuff. Y'all give that baby some some oxtails, brother. Um, let me see who else is calling. Um, let me see. Hello, who's calling? Hey, yo, what up, Tariq? This unbeatable bees, man. What's up, unbeatable? How you doing, fam? I'm good, fam. Appreciate you picking up. Appreciate you picking up. I follow all your platforms, bro. Appreciate all the knowledge you be dropping, the conversation, and everything, man. No doubt. Um. I wanted to call. I wanted to call in, man, because y'all kind of touched on something that 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 kind of, you know, what I'm saying, get, raised my antennas up, man. Um, the conversation of 
you know, uh, non-FBA coming over here and taking our jobs, right? So no, we we didn't say that again. About, okay, yeah, that's no, a, yeah, yeah. We didn't say that. We I've never heard nobody say that. And I just got into the conversation on Twitter and everything, and everybody just saying some wild, wild shit, and really letting everybody know how they feel about it. Yeah, you know, low key. Yeah. But here in Texas, I just wanted to touch on something about the jobs that they are taking that pretty much we don't want. Like, you know, so the jobs that they're taking down here in Texas are usually in a prison system, man. If yeah. you come down here in Texas, uh, the prison system, the jail systems is oversaturated with plenty of non-FBAs, uh, probation officers, parole officers, man, down here in Texas. Those are the jobs that they're taking. None of us want those jobs. So they're not taking jobs. They're taking jobs that oppress us. Actually, if you really think about that shit, man, it's like they're taking the jobs that none of us want, you know. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to give a little perspective on that, like down here okay. in Texas. Uh, let me get some more calls. I gotta, I'm on time, so let me get some more calls. I thank you for the calls, though, brother. I'm trying to get as many calls as I can Appreciate real quickly. You. Thank you, brother. All right, let me get, I want to get some some other non-FBA folks in here to, to, to give their perspective so people don't say this is a one-sided conversation. What's up? Who's calling? This is Patricia out of uh, California. Hey, Patricia. I enjoyed your show this. Hi, I enjoyed your show this morning. Uh, I just want people to know that Booker T. Washington, George Washington Carver, Frederick Douglass, all of them were slaves. They taught themselves how to read and write. Yes. We don't have to have any degrees. Mm. We are geniuses. Yes. We built everything in this nation. Now, I don't like the fact that Rihanna has Dr. King's picture on her Twitter page with the grill in his face. I think that these Africans who are coming over here, they're not, they're not FBAs. We need to start getting petitions to get them deported. See, they don't, <laughs> we can get them out of here because if they start instigating violence and things like that against us, we can get them deported. All we need to do is get enough signatures. We need to back them up and let them know that Bill Gates only has a high school diploma and he's practicing medicine. So get on him. Mm-hmm. Thank right. you. Thank Richard. you for the call. All right, let me get some more calls here. Let me try to get some FB, non-FBA folks in here to chime in. What's up? Who's calling? How you doing, Mr. Rigg? This is uh, Thoughts. I'm calling from Arizona. How you doing, brother? Are you, are you FBA or non-FBA? I'm definitely FBA. Uh, so I'm Long I'm, Beach, California. Okay, I'm going to have you call back. I got to call you. I'm going to have you call back. I want to get some non-FBA folks in here. What's up? Who's calling? We built everything in this nation. Hello? Yes. Yes. Who's this? That's Kenny. Who's this? Brother, who did you call? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, your name is Kenny? Yeah. Okay, Kenny, where are you from, sir? Nigeria. Now you, okay. Okay, what city are you in? Um, I'm in Canada. I'm in Toronto. Oh, okay. There you go. So how do you feel about the conversation, about the, the conversation between black, foundational black Americans and Africans from the diaspora? I mean, I just, I, I feel like it's, um, I wanted to give my perspective on my experience, you know, immigrating here and how I identified with people in this country. And I feel like uh, as much as I think that um, Jerry has a point, I disagree to some level. Okay. And, um, with what? I was with what? To, to give my own perspective about it. So what do you disagree with, sir? I disagree with the with Hello? Brother, did your prepaid minutes run out while you were live on air? Okay, my brother, he was on here and his prepaid minutes ran right on out, man. My bad. Okay, let's get some other um maybe the baby knocked the phone cord out. All right, brother. Okay, let's try some other people here. Let's try some other people. And shout out to the brother in Canada. But let's try some other people here. What's up? Who's calling? Hello? Hello? Okay, let's try this. Hold on. Okay, let's try this. All right, hello? Hello? Yes. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, what's your name, brother? Oh, my name's Emmanuel, bro. Okay, Emmanuel. Um, where are you calling? Yes, from? sir. Where are you calling from? Uh, from I'm from the South, from the South, Tennessee. Tennessee. All right. Now, you FBA or non-FBA? I'm non-FBA. Where's your family from? 
uh, Africa, man. Okay, what part? Uh, of, what part of Africa, brother? Goddamn. Uh, man, Central Africa, man. Uh, Rwanda, man. N- n- thank you, brother. Damn, was that so hard to do? <laughs> nah, bro. Nah, nah, not at all. But uh, uh, so, what's on your mind, yeah, man? Just, what's on your mind? Goddamn. Oh, man, I'm just listening on the conversations. I'm looking at this Twitter stuff. I'm like, damn, man. Like, what's going on with all this shit? But uh, I just want to say like two things. Like, Go ahead. yeah, I'm not. You know, I'm from Africa. I'm, I'm not an FBA and stuff like that. But you know, where I grew up here, where I came here a long time ago, like. I experienced some things like my friends, you know what I'm saying? But not even that, whenever, you know, I took a trip out to uh, Europe to even visit there at one point, people thought I was a uh, FBA. So they treated me different until my uncle came in. They're like, oh, he's one of us. And I'm like, like, yo, that's my own people. And they're treating other people like that. And I don't know, that kind of, thing. I was like, I see, I guess what I'm trying to say is that I could emphasize with FBA, you know what I'm saying? Um, but at the same time, I'm also going to try to work and do everything I can to, like, you know, to not have these kind of discussions, you know, sex, like, that kind of stuff. I'm saying I felt it, too, you know what I'm saying, so you're not alone, uh, even though I'm not FBA and stuff like that. But that's what I'm just trying to say. All right, brother. Okay, brother, you, I, I really don't know what you're talking about, but... <laughs> no, I'm saying that I've been discriminated because people thought I was a black man black american uh, and then somebody was like oh no you're african and then i saw how people switched up so I, like i see that's that's not cool that's what i'm just saying like the people were on the face even i didn't hear anything talk about oh we're just here trying to y'all think we're here trying to do this and that and stuff like that i'm not for that kind of discrimination and stuff like that you know? okay brother thank you god damn I, did, right. do y- I don't know what he was talking about man I have no idea. I'm, I'm, I just don't know what he was talking about. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, give people the benefit of the doubt here, but I just don't know what he was talking about. I have, I literally have no idea what the brother was trying to say. But more power to that brother. Okay, let's try some other people. Okay, okay. Uh, hello. Hello. Hey, brother. Who is this? Oh, hey, Tariq, what's going on, man? Finally got through, man. What's up, big bro? What's going on? You sound Canadian, too. Where you from, brother? Nah, no, 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 can, no Canadian here, big bro. Uh, this is Jay, Jersey, Ghana representing. Ghana, shout out to the Ghana family. So what's going on? What's on your mind? How do you feel about the conversation? Um, I, saw, I, saw, I, I was talking to my boy yesterday from Nigeria, and we, and we was, we was, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I was raised here, Tariq, so I understand what you're saying 100%. You know, some of the things we agree with, some of the things we don't. But my thing is, Tariq, here's what I was saying. Um, you, you carved out a great space for FBA and Adels. I'm kind of wondering why you can't carve out a space for us, the non-FBA riders, because there's a lot of people that support what you do right. that's non-FBA. So is that possible, Tariq? Can we get something going where, you know, some of us, I mean, when you put out the museum, a lot of us gave money to the museum that we're not FBA. Mm-hmm. So is it possible that you can, can you carve out a space just for us? So then, you know, you can separate the coons from the non-FBA riders and we can see who is who. You know, that's going to be an easy thing to do. And look, man, look, I've been riding for non-FBA folks, man. I've done a movie, 1804, about the hidden history of Haiti, about the Haitian Revolution and Haitian history. That's not my history in particular, but it just as a global black person, I can relate to it. And that True. movie is taught all in Haiti. I've given all types of money to Haiti. I've given all types of money to folks in the diaspora all over the place. So we've already been riding and that's the thing. We're looking at everybody else like, damn, come on, y'all. Y'all better get on board with this thing because we're already <laughs> riding with you. We riding hard. We we bigging up our brothers and sisters, the riders, not the coons. We're giving love and props yeah. to our brothers and sisters in the diaspora. But y'all, our, this is one of, one of our problems, family. Y- y'all have a lot of coons over there that undermine you over there in Ghana and Nigeria. Y'all have a lot of coons over there that unfortunately y'all haven't been able to deal with properly. And what happens is those coons get a fast track over here. They get sent over here and they bring that same coon in with them. And then we're going to have to start smashing down and cutting the bullshit out because we've warned folks, hey, man, y'all got to do something about these coons y'all sending over here. Y'all sending over these these buck dancing bed wenches and bed bucks and the Candace Owens and all these people. And now they're starting to undermine us. And if y'all don't get them or holler at them, we're going to start calling them out and that's what we're doing now and sometimes there might be a little collateral damage there but 
This it is what. No, nah, yeah. it's, it's not. It's not. It might be some ca- collateral damage. You know, because they making us look bad. But you gotta yeah. understand, Tariq. It's not. It's not all of the non FBAs that's not riders. Like I mean, when it, a, a lot of us been doing. L- let me tell you something. Them DVDs for eighteen oh four and the hidden colors. They played back home. Mm-hmm. I saw a picture of you one time when you posted a picture. And they were showing the 1804 documentary in the school in Ghana. Yeah. That school in Ghana was that school in Ghana was built by my uncle. Mm. So you, it's not. Yeah, it's not all of us that's you know on that coon shit. I know. Look, you man, what look, I'm saying? I got so yeah. much love no, in the I'm UK. Not, I'm not. I'm yeah. not trying to. I'm not trying to argue with you, Tariq. But no for real, like I, I, I've seen what you do, Tariq. But you got to carve out a space just for us. You got to carve out a space just for the non FBA riders. So, so in order to do okay, who. okay. So in order to do that, y'all got to let us know who the coons are among you. You, so that we'll deal with them and so you won't get that collateral damage when there's co- like yeah. us we call our coons out we'll let you know hey hey here's jesse lee peterson this nigga's a coon hey here's diamond yeah, and that's, silk that's, these are coons right here. these sheriff, are mammy that's sheriff clark that's sheriff yeah. clark right there that's larry elder that's jesse jackson right you know, we, call uh, our, we call our we call our coons out we call them out we don't exactly. sit up here and embrace them we say hey family this motherfucker right here he yeah he's fba but he's a coon we don't fuck with this nigga so we need y'all to do the True. same thing about the coons over there at, in africa and the caribbean let us know who the coons are thank you for the call brother all right, let's get a, some more calls in. Shout out to the family. What's up? Who's calling? Yo, Tyreek, what's good, brother? What's up, family? What's your name, sir? Wayne James, a.k.a. Jalita, calling from Brooklyn. Bro, I've been watching you for years. I see you pushing this um, non-foundational black American thing. And what I'm saying is America is the motherland for all the West Indian countries. So... I don't understand where's this divide coming from. I'm Jamaican. I was born in Kingston mm-hmm. on the floor. You say it's, yeah. it's, so the, it's the motherland for all Caribbean countries? Of course. I mean, where nope. else are we going to, where else, if you, if you check the history of it, there's a, there's a body, which is a mainland, and then you have islands around that, around that land. So what would you call it? No, the motherland for you is Britain. No, no, no. That's what the that, that's what the colonialists want to have us believe. But in all reality, if we as black people look at reality, because when um when Biden bring his peoples over here from Czechoslovakia or them skinheads over here, they're not going to be saying, "Oh, um, we're not fighting with we're not rocking side by side with um white Americans or or Nazis or whatever." You know what I'm saying? They're going to be rocking together. So like Brooklyn. Uh, and 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 Bronx got to rock together, and New York and Florida got to rock together, and Mississippi, North Carolina, Chicago, we got to rock. That's how the thing got to go, bro. I mean, I love you and everything, and I like your success and everything like that, and all the thing. I've been watching you for years, but bro, this non-foundational Black American um beef thing, we we should squash it and quell it because squash America it. That's our lineage. How how do we squash yeah. our lineage? How do we squash our lineage? When you, well, you got to understand, man, um, the, the American culture has been um, influenced greatly by um, non-foundational black Americans from the Haitian Revolutionary War. Uh, well, the Haitians helping the Americans in their Revolutionary War, bringing, sent, uh, bringing the voodoo to, you know, South, uh, to uh, New Orleans and stuff like that. And also with the rap music, and, bro, and we, mean, were doing, we were doing, we were doing hoodoo. Oh, stop, brother, don't do the rap thing. The rap didn't come I'm from not, no I'm Caribbean. Not, I'm not rap didn't come from no Caribbean, dude. No, 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 bro. Let me let me break it down for you because I hear you on this argument, but I really got to bring it to the people. Like the Jamaicans were influenced by Motown records and R and B and stuff. We didn't have on um, the technology at the time to really do music. But we did our music live and we had sound systems, you get me? And then when I came to America, bro, I didn't see big speakers. When I was in Jamaica, I left speakers from the ground. Brother, we had speakers. Sky. Brother, you had Grandmaster bro, Flowers. Brother, no, you had King I Disco here, King it Mario. Popcorn. It was popcorn. It was popcorn and cheese noodle with Pepsi and little speaker boxes. Dude, and, and the they had music. big speakers in New York before. Banging. Brother, they had big speakers in New York, this brother. We've been... This is in the 80s. 80s? This is in the 80s. Dude, you, 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 you two decades up. late, brother. Brother, you're two decades bro, late. Bro, we bro. black folks, foundational black Americans had big speakers, dude. We were rocking block parties way before y'all came no, over no, here, no. brother. I heard you mention something about where did we get those speakers from. We made them. We also um modified the amps 
to make the amps able to push those speakers. Do so y'all didn't, didn't really understand all those technologies? We didn't. Where did the speakers come from? Wait, 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 wait. Do, no, the no. So, we, so the black people could eat and and, and live, and then y'all wait, 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 wait. Hold on, wait, 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 really wait. Hey, media. now, what do you say about drugs? What do you say Ooh. about drugs? Well, bro, I really don't want to get too deep into all that. Because no, 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 you, no, because you, hold on, you said something about drugs. Wait, wait, what do you say about drugs? I'm saying, like, we, y'all couldn't even sell a stick of weed in the hood without the Italians coming over, breaking y'all necks and y'all noses with baseball bats, man, until we started cutting off their fingers and mailing it to them in, in, in Ziploc bags and, 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 and doing wild shit. Y'all weren't doing, y'all weren't doing that to the Italians. Why do you think there's a war? Why do you think there's a war against Jamaicans right now? Y'all, why do you think they're messing, messing y'all up were the, not, the culture? You stop. Know the thing about it stop. Wait, 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 wait. Y'all were not doing that to Italians. What are you talking about? Okay, okay. That's y'all were doing that to us. The Shawa the, the, the Posse? Yes. In the, the 80s. In and the 80s. Who, was, who was with the how, CIA? That's how a lot of who was with the CIA? Were able who was with the CIA? The hood because we, we stood with y'all. We no, never worked the with the Shawa Posse. The Shawa Posse was funded by the CIA. Bro, you just listen to the media. I'm, the I'm, media, I'm my from, ass. The, 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 the shower posse. The shower, the shower that's, posse was funded by the CIA. Google that. This is political organization funded to continue the, the, dude, the divide. And the so you're sitting. Of the so, culture. so, sir. So you were down. So you're talking about an organization that was down with the CIA against foundational black Americans. And we're supposed to give you props on that. No, bro. You know what? No, no, no. Now it's going to a whole other. I'm not even trying to debate, bro. This ain't no debate. Want it to be a separ- this ain't I, no I debate, want it brother. Separation. You right. You right. And I don't want to. Well, don't say nothing that's emphatically sour, false. Okay. Okay. I don't want to. I don't want us to be on a sour foot or anything, Tyree. But I'm just saying. I think we would work better together. As How? Haitian, Guyanese, Jamaican, African Americans. I came here. I went to Erasmus. It was stupid. Jamaicans and Haitians shooting each other, African Americans calling us coconut heads and immigrants, and we we fighting each other for nothing. And then the reggae music and the rap music came in, made everybody feeling nice, and then they came in and hit the culture with all this gun and all this crap. Dude, y'all came over here and came up off foundational black Americans. Y'all came up off the music, you came up off the culture. We taught y'all a lot. We taught y'all a lot about veganism and how to eat right. Nigga, please. No, you we didn't. We taught each other a lot. You taught I learned a... a lot from my African American friends. Dude, and I learned a lot you from didn't my teach friends. us anything. Y'all came, it. brother. Y'all came over here and started doing what we were doing, sir. Well, you know what? We came over here and we advanced it because we learned. No, we you didn't. R and B. We got the reggae from the R and B music, right? And then we built on it, right? We already had our little scat thing going, right? And then which y'all got from R and B? Which y'all got from R and B over here? Which y'all got the sky, the, right, y'all got it from R and B here. Right, the, the, and then and then the dance hall music you could say is really the original birth of reggae music. And then the rappers, right? And when dance hall came later. Dance hall came later after hip hop was created. When the rappers were struggling and they were where they weren't getting signed, they realized that the reggae mixtape thing was the was the popping deal. Dude, you're talking about something in the nineties. Right, that's where it all started. I'm telling you from the beginning, from the foundation. You just the saying room, anything that's right where now. That, We can't talk about 2000 Dude. with Lil Nas X running around in a dress. That's not where hip hop started. I it didn't start about, in no Jamaica. Like, where it started where we had the God MC, like you know what I'm saying? Rock him. Rock him. Who's foundational black yeah, American? We gotta talk about we got to talk about Big Daddy King. You Who's know? foundational he black American? With the big gold chain, LL Cool J He's not chain. Jamaican. Well, the Jamaican drug dealers in the hood that drove the BMW and the Benzes that everybody was looking up to. And we were selling weed and then the crack came in. The CIA brought so, in the crack and okay. then nobody really knew what the crack was going to do. Then how come, how come all of that crack didn't help Jamaica? Because of the the, the 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 intelligence of the, you see how we're here bickering over nonsense. I'm not bickering. That's I'm listening to you, crack. sir. That's why. How come all that crack, crack dealing happen. didn't get Jamaica popping? Because of the small mindedness of the and the small mentality of us as a black people. If we could just see the bigger picture, like stop 
looking at each other because you're, you're at least we got it cracking with the drugs okay listen listen at least at least we got it cracking with the drugs okay we did some drugs we sold drugs over here but at least we kind of got it cracking we had some shit popping you know what and you know what y'all did get it cracking but we we jamaicans there was a time when we had a strong moral code we had a strong ethnic then why uh why are people pissing and shitting in rivers over in jamaica right now brother fucked up right now you right you right because of the government because oh of the lord the, that, gov- I mean, that, the government that, that's the government all the government song the all uh, the government 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 oh lord the government oh the government oh this the government it's the government oh this the government oh the government okay all right brother thank you all right brother god damn okay see we got tether babble oh man Lord, this dude tried to give props to the damn shower posse, which was the damn CIA. Come on. Talking about how they got the drug game popping and people over there pissing in the damn lake. Stop it, dude. It's the government. That Oh, y'all kill me with the fucking government talk. Well, you can't get it popping because of the damn government. Like we don't live in the most oppressive government in recorded history over here in the United States. A government that had Jim Crow laws, a government that made us use restrooms in other places, a government that was a goddamn apartheid system, a government that sold us, sold our family, sold our children, lynched us, burned our communities down repeatedly. And you want to tell us about the government? We can't get it popping because the government... You don't have Jim Crow over there. Ain't nobody lynching you over there. Nobody's burning your shit down after you build it up. But it's the government. Oh, the government. Oh, Lord, the government. The government. Oh, the government. Oh, Lord, the government. Put on the cake so for government. It's the government. Oh, Lord, the government. Oh, it's the government. 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 Oh, stop it. Okay. Okay. Let's see who else we got. Okay. And another thing, my man, a lot of y'all, let me say this, a lot of y'all from the diaspora, y'all get ranked on as kids where that's part of our culture, ranking on each other, playing the dozens. And boy, y'all hold on to that shit for life. That shit burns you when you get ranked on as a kid. So y'all hold on to that hatred. That justifies all your hatred for the rest of your life. Oh, he's a goddamn cutter, called me a booty scratcher. Oh, the cutter, he called me a coconut when I was a baby. Fuck that nigga. Y'all got that bullshit. Get, let it go. What's up? Who's calling? <laughs> hey, what's up, man? It's, it's Jerome from New York. Jerome from New York. How are you, my brother? I'm good, man. I'm Jamaican, though. I'm my, Jamaican. My man. So how how's yeah. how long have you been over here? I've been here like for 18 years. Okay, 18 years. So you um, how how old were you when you came here? I came here like 17. Yeah, 17, 16. Okay, okay. Because you had to get rid of the government, the government, the government, the, the government, oh, the government, oh, yeah, the government. All right, so what's on your mind, man? Chime in on the conversation. That guy is crazy, man. I don't know what he's talking about. That's a lot of... My nigga said the shower posse. Man. Stop it. Okay, go ahead, brother. This is stupid, man, but I respect your um, program. been watching you for a lot of years now. I respect everything that you do. I, I would love for Jamaica to have a Tariq Nasheed, but... I don't think we're ever going to be that not ignorant because the ignorance over there is crazy. Like, I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. But, but much respect, man. I, I, got, I got love in Jamaica, man. Let me get some more calls here, man. Thank you for the call, yeah. brother. Okay. Because my man sound like he just smoked something. All right. What's up? Who's calling? Hi, this is Tariq. This is Rhea from Toronto. Hey, Rhea. How are you, dear? Good. How are you? I'm good. Now, Rhea, where's your family from? Uh, they're from the island of Grenada in the Caribbean. Yes, ma'am. So let's chime in. What do you think about the conversation, this conversation between Foundation of Black Americans and non-FBA people? Um, I can't blame you guys for feeling the way you do, honestly. Um, growing up uh, and witnessing what my parents have gone through, I do see a lot of undermining within our community. My father has suffered from it for years with his family, so... To have people treat each other like that, you would obviously, as FBAs, you would obviously give a side eye to non-FBAs when you see they can't even get their own stuff together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. A lot of people, man, from the diaspora. Again, there's a lot of divisiveness, divisiveness over there. And it, it, that's just just the reality of it. And then they try to bring it over here. And we're just not on that. We like, hey, you got to get on code with us, man, because we understand the enemy that we're dealing with. So when when black folks come over here, we expect them to be on code with us. This mentality where we, if we go over there, it's all about us. I am coming from poverty, so I, I have to do what I have to do. It's that mentality. I got to get mine. I got to get mine. I'm like, damn, nigga, if that's the case, why are we even supporting you to come over if you? it's all about you getting yours and you'll do anything? So, damn, that'll put us in a position of, of being undermined. So, and we, we and won't, I, I've seen that with my I've seen that also with my boyfriend's family. His family's from Ghana, mm. and he has family members who live over there. And uh, it's not pretty. Um, it's a lot of I need, I need. It's a lot of trickery. It's a lot of you send money. And this is also within the Caribbean as well. I know my father has sent money to family members countless times, and you find out they're not using the money for what it was supposed to be used for. Or they tell you they need something like this, but they're walking around with an iPhone and brand new shoes. So it's it's a balancing act. Like I've spoke, my dad is aware of it. He's spoken to it about, about it numerous times. I've actually gone to school in the States. So I've, I've lived amongst uh, FBA and they're honestly, you guys are the most welcoming, warm people that I've ever met. Yes, like ma'am. people, black people here in Toronto, they're really cool. They're, you know, they're together, but they're, my father has always said, you know, the difference between living in the Caribbean and living here in Toronto and actually going and visiting black people or foundational black americans in the united states is there's more more of a of a cohesive attitude you know yeah. people are more willing to help people are more together versus here everybody's kind of side-eyeing each other and looking at each other like mm, okay i know you but i really don't really want to help you or they're not too willing to give and to uh get on code so yeah that's just a lot of the differences that i've seen real talk thank you so much for the call beloved very good commentary there all right let's get some more people here what's up who's calling <laughs> Yeah, hello. Yes, sir. My name is uh, Paul. I'm calling. I'm calling from Maryland. All right, Paul. From Maryland. Now, Paul, you FBA. You're non FBA. Uh, non FBA. I'm uh, Nigerian. Okay. Nigerian. There you go. So we had a lot of yeah. people from Nigeria chiming in. On yeah, the yeah, I can see that. I can see that. And I just want to say one thing. I don't claim them niggas. I really, really <laughs> don't. I really, really, really don't. Because a lot of them really come over here and they have this sort of like entitlement, talking about like I did it. And so you could, too, not even take it into, you know, accountability, all the other things, the COINTELPRO, some of the, the grants that, you know, allowed them to, 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 to get to where they are. You know, some of the visa lottery programs that they used to do back in the day. I know some people who got that, you know, so a lot of people don't take that into into consideration. They just think, oh, I'm getting it popping right now. So why can't they? And black American people, like you rightly noted, have been doing this for, for time. Like they've been building stuff and, and, and they're still building stuff. So I don't really understand this whole disconnect where, you know, people feel like they're better than each other. And for me, I just keep supporting the fight, you know, shout out to the FBA family. And, um, you know, we, we, we got to defeat white supremacy. For me, I'm on the side of defeating white supremacy. I'm black first before I'm Nigerian or any other nationality. So that's how I look at it. No doubt. That's just all I want. Man, much respect to you, brother. So this is, these are the kind of brothers and sisters we need. Brothers talking good sense. You know, people on, on the, the, the Twitter space, it was all of this, yeah, y'all didn't do nothing and y'all lazy. It was all that y'all lazy Akata talk and all of that trolling. And when we say, hey, dude, if we so lazy, why are you over here? How come you didn't get it popping? Then they start whining and crying. But let's get some more folks on here. Who's calling? Uh, what's up, brother? Hey, what's going on, brother Tariq? How you doing? What's up? What's your name, sir? My name is Tim, man. I'm from Arkansas. All right. Are you FBA, Tim? Oh, man. I'm foundation by birth, by natural birth right. You hear me? No doubt. No doubt. All right, let me let me get a couple other folks in here because I want to get some of the non FBA okay. folks to chime in. I, I, so non non FBA people only. Let me get them to call up because I again I don't want the conversation to seem like it's one sided. So I don't want people to say we're bullying anybody or just attacking anybody. I'm giving everybody a fair chance to speak what they have to speak. Even the like the Jamaican government guy, him he can speak too. What's up? Who's calling? <laughs> oh hi, I can't believe I got through. Uh, Tariq. Yes, ma'am. What's your name? Uh, hi, my name's Olivia. Um, I'm from 
Sacramento, California. Okay, where's your family from? Are you FBA or non-FBA? Uh, non-FBA. Okay, where, where are you from? Where's your family from? My family is from Nigeria. Oh, okay. So how do you feel about the conversation, dear? Um, well, I didn't hear too much of the conversation earlier on Twitter, but, I mean, you hear the same things over and over, so I get the gist. And um, I very much agree with um, foundational black Americans here. I was born here, mm -hmm. so I didn't immigrate with my parents um, here to the U.S. I was born here, and my experience here has just been influenced by um, black Americans here. Unfortunately for a lot of, um, I, I noticed with immigrant children, the first cutoff they get is they don't know their language. Yeah. And I'm one of those kids. So it's kind of hard to pick up your um, your ethnic group when the biggest claim you can have to it is your language, and a lot of us don't know it. Right, If right. we know it, we, we have to take upon it ourselves to learn our own language. So, <laughs> so it's kind of hard to hear other um, – I, I can't speak to everybody's um, experience – but kind of hearing the, you know, the inflections and the voices and seeing where everybody comes from, you can kind of tell who has like a native African tongue, even if they're, whether they're African or not, and who has an American tongue. Yeah. So when I've gone home with my father, I've been very much um, called out for it in that my parents didn't teach us our language and we're kind of laughed at for it. So... <laughs> Unfortunately, a lot of our parents already helped in that disconnect. Mm. So I'm not, so I wouldn't be quick to, you know, jump to the defense of my ethnic group, knowing that when we come back, that when we go back, we also, like the sister who from uh, Canada said, there's always a side eye. Um, and I've heard that from many pieces. I've heard that from many people. When they go over there, people who are actually from there, they come over here for a few years, go back, and they start, like, you sound like a kata girl. You're a kata girl and all of that stuff. So, yeah, I, I hear that. Uh, yeah, they, they uh, uh, fortunately, but I've gotten the same, you know, kind of name calling where, They'll just say, "Oh, you're very American. You're an American girl," but they'll say it in the in the way of like like you being an Akata kind of thing. Yeah. And it's very hard to get things started over there. Even my parents have talked about it, and they're very reluctant to even, you know, build something as simple as roads in our country. Yeah. It's it's so unfortunate to go there and be like, we don't have basic roads. Um, how our markets are done is just you know it's it's like if if we went to all these universities and we're fighting tooth and nail to get an education and we pick up education how come we can't be, build basic marketplaces basic roads there's churches across the street like starbucks here it's just very disheartening to see um so and every time i've told um FBA that I'm Nigerian or even African, I've always gotten a big welcome. So I've never gotten the, you know, typical like African booty scratcher kind of thing. Um, if anything, I've always gotten little slick comments from white, from white people or Asians, but never from um, black Americans here. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I just wanted to, you know, chime in and thank you so much. Well, let me, thank you so much. Let me get some more calls in here. All right. Who's calling? Yes, my name is Pascal. Pascal, okay. Where, where, where in Africa are you from, sir? I'm from the Congo. The Congo. Are you in the Congo now or are you in the United States now? I am in the United States right now. My brother. So what? How, let's chime in. What do you think about the conversation, sir? I think you are being a bit misguided. Uh -oh. uh, first, I want to say that, you know, Africans who come to this country, many of them are very well educated. Mm -hmm. They are also strong contributors to the society. You understand? How so? And, well, because they come here, many of them with university degree. Okay. Master's, PhD. Uh, and I, I must tell you, you know, you, I think, sometimes overvalue your people. Uh, really? How so? Well, Okay, I can only speak to an educational context, but I can tell you that, uh, you know, see, okay, I, 
I, I teach at the HBCU, and I can tell you that your people they do not study, okay? They do not really apply themselves to learning the material. Oh. And when you look at the universities in the master's program, the PhD program, many of the blacks, they're African. And the difference between those people and the African-Americans is very, is very stark. And it's stark in a way that the African students apply themselves more, they study harder, and they score better than the African-American students. Okay. Now, I don't, I don't say that to be insulting. You okay. understand? I'm not mm -hmm. saying that. You do. Right. I'm just saying that there is a cultural difference between Africans who come to this country to study very, to, to be diligent in their studies, to be diligent in their work, mm -hmm. compared to the, many African-Americans who do not apply themselves. Okay. They do not apply themselves to their study. They're not applying themselves to the opportunities of this country that if you if you apply, again, apply yourself. Okay, study your so why, are, okay, if you're looking at the screen, sir, look at the screen. Now, this is your homeland over here. Now, why are you not applying all of that to your homeland? Why does your homeland look like this? Why is it in squalor if you apply yourself so much? Why is your homeland looking like this? Because, again, sir, our, our government oh, is controlled by the, Europeans. The government. The, the government. The European. The government. The goddamn government. It's the what? Do you think this government isn't oppressive as well, sir? You, you understand the resources in Africa are taken from this country. They are, we are not paying any taxes on the resources that are stolen from us. So Do, those re without that tax money, they're not. There are resources in the Congo. There are white people living in the Congo, sir. You do you do you know that there's white people and Asian people living in the Congo? It's not many of them. It's not many of them. It's, you're no, right. It's not. You're understand. right. It's not. You're right. right. It's not many of them. You're right. It is not many of them. But why are they not living in squalor? Why are the whites and Asians not living in squalor? Again, sir, many of them come with their own money. You understand? They come with their own money, their own resources. What resources? Just Our money? Resources what resources are stolen from us. No, okay, okay. stolen from us. Okay, when the white people and Asians go there, they go there to get resources. That's why they're there. They don't have to bring resources in. They go there to get resources. And why are they... From the corporate government that they have put in place. From the puppet government that they have put in place. The government. Then why don't you deal with the government? With what weapons? You, you are the one. It's your people who are selling the weapons. Eh? They are, sell, they are okay. selling them to what? Okay. Foundational black Americans. They are selling, they are selling them to the puppet government. You mentioned the CIA. You have okay. mentioned so many. Those are the people who have, you have, your people have empowered now, in our countries to, to deceive us, to steal from us. Okay. So now our people, you mean the white government, they are giving the weapons to the people over there. But we challenge the, the but we challenge the United States government. We challenge the white government, which is the most powerful military on the planet. We are 12 percent and we challenge that government and we get the things that we need so that we're not living in squalor. The only reason we're not living in squalor is because foundational black Americans challenge the government. Why don't you? Because, again. I can I can speak to this in this way, because if you the sit up here talking about because if you sit here and talk about how the the, the African students got class, it more popping, I want to hear why you don't have it popping at home. Because the educated classes in America are larger than the educated classes in Africa. Do you understand? Africa, for the most part, we are still almost sixty percent are illiterate. They, they cannot, but you just you said, sir, you just, said you, you just said, you just said, you just said, you just said, wait, whoa, 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 hold on. You just said, sir, how educated you are over foundational black Americans. So now you all illiterate. 
So which one is it? Is it Uchi Wally or is it One I Mike? Say our now you all illiterate. Is, I illiterate. Our majority. But, but you were just saying how much here. educated you were over Black Americans, sir. So which yes, one is the it? The ones who come here, you're right. The ones who come here, you're you're right. The ones who come here, they are more educated than the average. It's true. But I'm telling you, as the majority of Africans, they are illiterate, and you cannot have a functional government with an illiterate society. Then teach yourself to read. Why won't you teach foundational black Americans taught themselves to read? Booker T. Washington, Frederick Douglass, George Washington Carver, so many foundational black Americans, Harriet Tubman, so many foundational black Americans. It was illegal for us to read. They would kill you if you read, read. We created a language called Tut language in order to teach each other how to read. I don't ever want to hear no bullshit about how foundational black Americans are less educated or whatever. We know how to educate ourselves enough that we can build so that we're not living in squalor, so that we're not pissing in rivers and shitting in the streets. Okay, I do not know how to speak again on those people that you have mentioned, but I can tell you that your country has developed a public education system that is well renowned, okay? But we do not have that. We do not have those things. So you have a larger educational class, but we don't have it. But the people who come here, again, they are the best of the best of our country. They are the best of the best of the African continent. So, you know, I, I just feel like you are just, uh, you know, you are really just, you know, you're it's two different straws or whatever the saying is, you know. Just. Okay. All right, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. So he was about to start babbling. See, when you call them out, they get to babbling. They run out of steam. When you start calling them out. They run out of steam. He sat here talking about how much educated they are. Foundational black Americans, they just don't know how to read. And we, we come over and we do so much better. Then how come you ain't doing better at home? Well, most of us are illiterate. Or oh, damn, nigga. <laughs> okay. Well, that just, you blew up your own argument, bro. See, all you got to do is just start pointing out how they're living back home. They come over here with these grandeurs of delusion. See, that's the problem. Don't come over here with grandeurs of delusion, how you just balling out of control. You'll go find one or two black folks who some of you are doing a little better than and then try to hang your hat on them. We got very intelligent black people, black kids, black students over here. So don't tell me how uneducated black kids are over here, especially if you're coming from a place where you admit that most of you are illiterate. You're not going to play that game. See, that's why you, black family, y'all have to start checking some of these non-FBA folks who come in here with that rhetoric. You have to check them on that stuff. Come on, some of the non-FBA people, come on. Y'all call in and let's bring some truth to power here. Who's calling? Uh, Tariq, it's me. It's me again, man. Jay from Ghana. Okay, I'm going to have you call back, brother. Have you call back. Okay, shit. Okay, let me get some new people in here. Let me get some new folks in here. What's up? Who's calling? Hey, what's up, Tariq? This is uh, Black Voltron calling out of West Oakland, California. What's up, Black V? Let me have you call back, brother. Let me get some more folks in here. Okay, let's try this. If you called already, don't call back, guys. What's up? Who's calling? Yes. Yes, this is Mahmoud calling from New Jersey. All right. Did you call before, brother? No, sir. Okay. Now, where are you from? Where's your family from, sir? Family from Sudan. Sudan. There you go. So, oh, yes, yeah. And yeah. of black, and I'm black first. Yes, sir. So, what's on your mind? Yeah. My, on my mind is that reparations is necessity and it's been long overdue. Yes, sir. And wherever we find ourselves on the planet in a system of white supremacy, we should be supporting the aboriginal people of that continent, of that country to reparations, especially when it's countering white supremacy. Real Period. talk. Thank you so much, brother. All right, let's get some more folks in here. What's up? Good, good conversation tonight. What's happening? Who's calling? Uh oh, what's up? Who's calling? Hello. Hey, what's up, Tariq? My name is My name is John from Minneapolis. Okay, John, are you Somalian? No, I'm I'm Kenyan. Kenyan. Okay, so okay, I I heard a little East African thing going on there. All right, so what's on your mind, bro? Let's uh, speak yeah, on it. Yeah, yeah. What's on my mind is, bro, you you hitting everything on the money, you know? Yes, sir. Because most of us, most of us, most of us immigrants, you know, I, I I've been here for like twenty years. We look at foundational Black Americans. Through that tribal lens. Yeah. That's real talk, 
That's why that's why Africa is so fucked up because if it, even the guys in Nigeria, they also they also have beef over there. I'm Igbo, I'm Yoruba, I'm Hausa. They beefing all the time. Right. In Kenya, well, I'm Kikuyu, I'm this, I'm that. Beefing even Somali, they they have the same language, same religion, but they beef him because of tribe. Mm. I'm Hawia, I'm the Rod. So when, when we come here. We look at you as a different tribe. You know, that's real talk. Yeah. So what you're doing is is 100%, you know, just, you know, consider yourself foundational black Americans. You know, fly that flag proud. Call the bullshit out. Because, hey, it's about time, man. Because guys come over here, you know, and they shit on you all the time. Oh, yeah. these guys. This, we, we, we got all, all types of names for you guys. It's yeah. a kata. It's Nyeusi. It's Nugu. Nugu means like you're a monkey. All, all type. Or oh, oh, if you're from from Somali, they call you guys um Jerere. Jereres, yeah. Because you have black, uh, yeah, Jerere. Because you have like uh, it's harder hair. Somalis have like softer hair. So it's all kinds of bullshit names, you know. Mm. So keep on the good work, bro. Man, you know I, what I mean. You're calling it out. Keep 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 up the good work. Man. I appreciate you, bro. Thank you so much. My man hit on some real heavy stuff. I told people about all those different names that they have. Now this is the brother from over there bringing that to that truth. He's telling you what they be saying. All of these crazy names they have for us. It ain't just the Kata. They got a whole bunch of names over there for us, man. It's insane. It's insane. Let me get some of my non-FBA folks to call in. We're having a great conversation. We're bringing truth to power here tonight. Yo, what's up, brother? Oh, hello? Hey. Oh, what's up, Tariq? What's up? Who's calling? I'm FBA. I'm going to have you call up a call later, brother. We're only getting non-FBA folks calling in. Okay. Non-FBA people only. What's up? Who's calling? Yo, is this Tariq? This is Tariq. Who's calling? All right, look. This is Duke. Duke, are you FBA, non-FBA? Look, I got a, I got a question, man. All right, nigga. I, I asked you a question. Don't ask me another question. Get your ass off here. What's up? Who's calling? Hey, hi, hey, Tariq. It's Cliff. What's up, brother? Now, I can tell you're not an FBA because your phone sounds janky. Well, where are you from, brother? Uh, from Florida. Okay. Well, uh, where's your family from? Where's your, from? where's your Haiti. family from? Haiti. Haiti. Okay, brother. Are you on a boat right now? Because you sound very muffled. Nah, I'm in the work. I'm in the uh, building. Okay. My bad. All right, so what's on your mind, brother? Um, It's like uh, you're the only person one that's picking up for FBA or the financial, but we stick up for y'all, but y'all giving us the wrong lead. So, like, voting, we vote for uh, that white dude right now, the president. Um, oh, okay, I, I, his phone is just killing me. Brother, family, y'all cannot call with an iPhone 1. If you have an iPhone 1, take that thing somewhere and get it exchanged. Okay, please, I, I can't hear with those iPhone 1s. This brother has the very first iPhone. Brother, I really can't understand what you're saying on that thing. Okay, let's try a couple of more people. All right, what's up? Who's calling? Hey, what's up, brother Terry? This is Rob from Miami. Rob from Miami. A lot of Miami <laughs> folks. Okay, Rob, where, are you from Haiti too? Or Haiti or Jamaica? Where are you from? Which, uh, I'm a Zoe, baby. Zoe, there you go. There you go, man. So what's on your mind, sir? <laughs> hey, Terry, listen, man. I want to debunk this whole thing about, you know, black American used to call uh, people from Caribbean or, or Africa name, man. Let me tell you something, man. I remember mean, when I came here, young kid, my mom used to buy me, you know, send me to school with church shoes and stuff. So I had to tell her, like, mom, this ain't cool, you know. So we, you know, I had to, we need to assimilate because this is a whole different culture. And guess what? She realized I was telling the truth. So by the following year, she got me looking straight. And when I went to school, black man just wasn't messing with me. Real talk. I was because that's what y'all you, you know because I told people that before a lot of y'all get clowned not because you're from another place y'all get clowned because y'all parents be dressing y'all in them janky fucking outfits when they bring y'all over here so you gonna get roasted Fact. Every everybody's gonna get roasted you come to school I would get roasted if I came to school fucked up so the thing is Fact. Um, Fact. We, we don't we don't care about you being Caribbean or Haitian if you come to school and you eight years old and you got on a three piece fucking suit Nigga, you about to get the business coming out on the playground listen, with it. <laughs> listen, listen. Once my parents got me right, my girlfriends was nothing but black American. Yeah. And I was in I with my Haitian accent. Yeah. So it was ain't about me from 
coming from another country. You understand? And 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 also, I wanted to tell you, um, you know, you know the situation with Haiti. Haiti, Haiti is is dealing with this whole thing because remember, Haitian, we crush all these superpowers. So oh, yeah. I think they put, they, you know, they put together and said we're gonna squeeze them, man. Of course, they can't squeeze no more. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm already so knowing. Therefore, all right, okay. Let me get some more calls here. Thank you for the call, brother. All right, let me get some more people here. What's up? Who's calling? Yeah, this is Tariq from Maryland. All right, what's your name? Tariq. Yeah, we got the same name. I oh. Just start, mine's with a K. Oh, there you go. Now, where are you from, brother? Yeah, I'm from Maryland. I was born in D.C. Now I'm living out in Maryland. Okay, so you're I'm a F- foundational black American. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm going to have you call later. We only want non-FBAs calling up right now. Let's see. Look like we got somebody in Georgia. What's up? Who's calling? Angela from Atlanta. Hello, Angela. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm good. Now, Angela, you FBA or non FBA? I'm both. Okay. Um, where, where's your Where's your dad from? Jamaica. There you go. So, how do you My feel about the conversation? Al- your mom's from My Alabama. Mom's from Alabama. Alabama. Mm-hmm. So, collard greens and Bammy. All day, so <laughs> right. <laughs> so, how do you feel about the conversation being on both sides of the track, so to speak? Well, growing up, like okay, so real quick because I know you got other callers. Um, I moved from the South Bronx when I was really little to Alabama in the seventies. So I grew up mostly in Southern culture, but I still got to experience Caribbean culture as well. From visiting visiting the South Bronx in the summertime, so you're right. A lot of things, what like um, um, black um, black people from other countries say about Americans is true. Mm-hmm. Like they, and a lot of times they do think that they're better than us. Yeah. Um, but you do have exceptions. Like I'm agreeing with all the. Um, non SBA, like you do have exceptions to those rules. I mean, you always have exceptions to every rule, right? Yeah. So I, I'm saying all this to say, like, what what is the solution? Um, because if it wasn't for my Caribbean father or my um, my mother who was born in the '60s in Alabama and left Alabama because I mean she was born in the '40s, but she left in the '60s. Um, so if it wasn't for her leaving Alabama in the 60s during the Civil Rights Movement and moving to um, San Diego where she met my dad. Hello? Oh, but I don't, hello? Yeah, I don't know what happened. Her phone just clipped off. That wasn't me hanging up on. I don't know what happened to her. Let me get somebody else. Hello? Hey, what's going on, Tariq? I'm, I'm going to get out. I'm going to be real fast. The only thing I want to say about that last caller the uh, the old head the old head Jamaican dude he yeah. can contextualize and understand how Western powers can undermine whole countries whole continents but he can't come here and understand how a whole community that's only twelve percent of the population can be undermined exactly. within the borders of one of the strongest governments on the planet that's it, all it thank, real talk that's a good point see when it when it comes to us when we have issues after all the struggling that we've done. It's like, well, you niggas just did not pull yourself up by your bootstraps. You did not pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Is that we didn't do something right? It was just it's us. It's something inherent in us that we didn't do. But when we point out, hey, there's a hundred million niggas over there, and three white people, and the white people are whooping your ass, and the Asian people are smacking you around. Well, damn it, nigga, what, what's up with that? What are you doing? Well, it's the government. The, it is not my fault. It is government. It is the government. The government is abusive. Uh, stop. If we talk about the government, oh, stop here. Stop complaining about the white man. Stop complaining about the white man. When we point out that it's white people over there, it's five of them who own everything and they're drinking all the clean water and all the clean food. It's easy. We cannot fight the government. They have guns from the United States. All five of them have guns. Stop. Stop it. Okay, we're going to get a couple of more calls in here. One, a couple of more calls. Let me get some non-FBA folks in here. What's up? Who's calling? Hello. What's up, brother? Hey, what's going on? Right, what's your name, sir? No, I'm out here in the, the Shot Town area, bro. JD. JD from Shot Town. Now, JD, are you FBA or non-FBA? No, I'm FBA, bro. 
Okay. All the way, bro. All right, thank I, you. I heard your uh, segment okay, yesterday. Okay, okay. we got to get some non-FBA folks on here. And JD oh, sound like he was half asleep. What's up? Who's calling? Hi, this is Whitney from Alabama. Hi, Whitney. How are you? Whitney, are you a white woman? No, I'm 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 black. Okay. Um, are you foundational Black American, Whitney? I am. Okay. So what's on your mind, ma'am? My people are from Delaware. Okay. Well, you sound I very. I mean, I can white. trace my. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. It's okay. So what's on your mind, ma'am? Um, I just want to say that I completely agree with what you're saying. I just think that I know that my grandparents are completely traumatized from segregation and what they've gone through with having to um, be in black schools and then transition to white schools and being called multiple, obviously, derogatory words yeah. and things like that. And I think that to then experience words from people who are immigrants and are from their native country and that are making fun of their you know experience is again degrading from both sides so i just wanted to got that but yeah i I only got to test and see if you black for real because you sound like a, a white undercover white person I'm sorry, I went to private school. I okay. I am black though. Let me get your test. Now let me ask you this. If you have chicken, what do you season it with? Mm-hmm. Goya, Lowry's, or Epsom salt? Lowry's. There you go. Um uh, Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I promise I am. <laughs> Look, okay, one more question. No, one more question. If you yes, if you of course. if you get Popeye's chicken. What yeah. sides do you get? Red beans and rice. Oh, the red beans ma- and rice. Or hot pepper. The red beans and rice. Okay, there obviously. you go. Uh, okay, there we go. All right. Thank yeah, you so much. No, I, just, <laughs> I wanted to call in. Oh, and by the way, somebody said in the chat. Wait, I've okay, seen, okay wait, real quick. Are, are you date, are, are, do you have a white boyfriend? I do not. As oh. I don't have any boyfriend at the moment. Okay, oh, you paused though. So your last boyfriend, were you dating a white man? No. Okay. All right. You you keep pausing on that. Somebody said there's some some. Oh, I don't mean to. I. Okay. I'm sorry. I have a lag on my phone. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. All right. There, thank you so I don't much. Need to keep pausing. All right. There you go. Shout out to that sister. She said she's black. Okay. Okay. Well, real quick. All right. What's up? Who's calling? Hi. Hey. Uh, my name is Takula. What's your name, dear? I don't have any. Tux. Tux. Okay. Where are you from, Tux? Um, I was born here, but both of my parents are from Nigeria. There you go. So, yeah, a lot of Nigerians, boy, they've been all in our mentions all day. How do you feel about the conversation? I've seen that. Yes. How do you feel about the conversation? Um, I wanted to interject earlier on um, Twitter, but I couldn't get through. I I agree with Tariq. Yes. All right, what's up? You call it? Yes. Hey. Now, why do you think there's so much pushback from people within your community in the diaspora? Why do you think there's so much pushback against us? I think it's a lack of knowledge. Um, back home in Nigeria, there is no type of education in regards to history, even with Nigerian history. It cannot be located. And I think the pushback is because, like I, once, I, once again, I said it's a lack of knowledge. They do not understand that while they were back home doing whatever, African Americans were fighting for their civil rights. Yeah. And I yeah. feel like... They continue even and, and I speak with an American accent. I experience it until I speak my native language. And then they're like, oh, my sister, my sister. But I, I experience it every single day. Mm. So with, it's two sides to the story. And I've been trying to say it for so long. My friends from Nigeria were calling me all morning. And I was like, You're, you are not here. And African um, Africans come here to exploit, especially female women. Mm. Even after Tariq spoke earlier, a lot of them said, well, it don't matter. We'll just marry your women for green cards. Mm. Mm. Heavy. So Heavy. it goes both ways. Mm. And I think like earlier. Yeah. Go ahead, sister. Go ahead. I think earlier, the reason why they were not receptive is because Tariq was just definitely to the point. He didn't sugarcoat anything, but I do think the presentation is what they could not take. And it's like Africans will fight. They fight South Africans. They fight everybody. But when somebody else calls them out, it's just they all 
want to become united. Yeah. Tariq yeah. is absolutely right. They think that African American, even my mother, I had to correct her on several occasions. She always say that um, African Americans are lazy. And I'm like, how can you say that? I'm like, do you realize that you are here in this country? And yes, I'm a American born citizen, but this is the only reason why you have a, a, a your privilege. Yeah. Does that make any sense? Yes, it does. Real talk. So, thank you so much, beloved. Very good. Me out. Oh, oh, sorry about that, sister. Yes, sorry about that. Good, good commentary. See, a lot of folks, man. If you talk to almost anybody over there, man, their parents, it's the same spiel. Those foundational Black Americans are lazy. Stay away from the akata. And then when people get called out, they try to act dumb and act like, "Oh, you're attacking me. You're attacking me." Now, see, we should have been having this conversation a long time ago to clear the air, to get all of this stuff in the forefront. Let's take all of this stuff from behind the scenes and put it on out here so we can have an understanding so things can get done. What's up? Who's calling? Yo, this is Rod. Did you call before, Rod? Yeah, yeah, I was calling. Nigga, I was God. calling. I ain't calling. I ain't calling. God damn. Okay. Call. Uh, You're attacking okay. me. You're attacking me. Hey, what's up? Who's calling? No, see, we should have been having this Hello? conversation. Hey, brother. Time ago to clear the hey, how, uh, how's it going? Uh, my name is Derek. Derek. Now, Derek, are you FBA or non FBA? Uh, non FBA. Where's your family from? Uh, Nigeria. There you go. So, how do you feel about the conversation, sir? Um, I, I think you're overlooking one thing. It, I, I go to school for history. And okay. There's one. There's one rule about uh, civilizations and their uh, interactions with other cultures is that whenever they cut themselves off from other cultures or other groups of people like their neighbors, uh, it results in stagnation uh, politically, economically, and in all sorts of things. So if you see in Africa, the uh, countries that do the best are the ones that had other contact with other civilizations that were more advanced with them, like Nigeria, like South Africa. They might not be doing that well relative to other Western countries, but they do the best comparative to their neighbors in Africa. Okay. It's the same thing with the uh, African Americans that went to, uh, that were in the United States. They had more contact with other cultures more advanced than themselves and they tend to do better. So that's one thing you're overlooking. You, no, there's no group of people that become more advanced by cutting themselves off from the world. Now, who did Foundation of Black Americans have contact with while we were enslaved? Uh, with European cultures, the Scots, the Italians that came through. They're, but what did America they... Call, one of the, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, oh, go ahead, hold go on. Ahead. Ooh, hold on. What did they contribute to us? What did we get from them except we were forced to use the English language? But other than that, what did we get from Scottish culture that was really progressive or Irish culture that was progressive? Uh, democracy, their political structures, their um, uh, they had more freedoms as the as the, uh, the was slavery was throughout. slavery democratic? How how was slavery democratic? They did not stay slaves. Americans, the black Americans today are not slaves. But no, there, was, there was progression. Okay, no, the, no, the no, 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 no. Well, brother, whoa, whoa, because you said they brought democracy, but. Democracy and slavery is a complete contradiction. But it did not stay. In but the slavery fact that is my point. It and, lasted for four hundred years, dude. What are you talking and, about? And Tariq, you're overlooking my point that they were exposed to different cultures, like more what, sir? Advanced in themselves. Like more what? 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 Themselves. Who? What? what wait, foundational Black Americans were exposed to what advanced cultures? Because Europe wasn't advanced at the time when they started slavery in America. Europe was not advanced. Oh, the closest thing to advancement was Spain, and that was because of the Moors, but Europe was not in advanced. In fact, when they came over here to start colonies on their own, they kept failing. They only succeeded when Foundation of Black Americans were brought into the mix and forced to labor alongside them. So who benefited from who, sir? 
you're overlooking the point, the fact that uh, Europeans, much of uh, the Europeans, already had access to uh, guns and gunpowder. And through things like the Silk Road, they advanced technologically. That was the Moors. Co- cross pollination. That was the Moors. Those were black people. Those were the Moors. The Chinese, who were, the Chinese invented gunpowder, not the Moors. I, I, they were already trained. I know that. The Moors went the and Chinese. got it. The Moors brought the gunpowder into Europe. The Chinese weren't going into Europe like that. The Chinese Mo- were absolutely the originators of gunpowder. Anybody I know can that. Google this look this up right I now. know that. I, and, I'm, and I'm saying. Stop. 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 Don't babble now. And don't do straw man arguments. Don't do that. Stop. Calm down because you sound like you're going to start low-key trolling. We know that the Asians created gunpowder. The Moors were the ones who brought it out of Asia because the Moors were on the Silk Road doing a lot of trading, bringing things into Europe. Okay? So let's get that straight. Don't do a straw man argument, dude. I'm I'm not straw man. Okay, now go ahead. You're making my point for me. Because I'm saying the cross-pollination through trade it's what advances civilization. Cutting yourself off from other your neighbors results in stagnation. And I'm saying the Africans in the United States being exposed to more cultures, more technologies, they do better off. That's a lie. Like That's a lie. Because in and slavery, I, I, in slavery, we were the technology. We were the technology. We weren't did, exposed to other people. Did. The Scottish didn't know anything because Scotland was full of it was shitty. England was shitty. Ireland was shitty. They didn't have any technological advances over in Europe like that, especially Northern Europe. We were the technology, sir. We built the railroads, foundational black Americans. We built the bridges. We were not only the builders of the houses of early America, we were the architects of many of these places, sir. Okay, okay. first of all, slavery is not proprietary to Europeans in the United States or in Europe. Slavery is moot in every culture. Irrelevant. Every culture. Irrelevant. What does that have to do with foundational black Americans? You keep making my point for me, and no, then you say you stop at slavery, sir, and I'm saying it's the cross-pollination. You keep saying cross-pollination, but you can't show who we cross-pollinated with who was so much advanced. With the, with the Europeans that They you, were not that advanced at the time during... Were, if they were so advanced, okay. I'll, why would they starve in I'll Europe, dude? Example. They were I'll, not I'll advanced. The English were not advanced. I'll, what are okay, you talking I'll about? Give you, I'll give you an example. The Zulus in Africa. Oh, okay? Lord. The what only, are you about to talk about? What? I, I got to hear this. Okay, what? The, the only battles that the Zulus beat the, the Europeans were at were when they were more, they were greater in numbers. But the Europeans had machine guns. They had steel. They had uh, the Zulus were only iron at an Iron Age level. The Europeans were more advanced than them, and that's why they were able to divvy up parts of Africa. That's where you're over. Where let you're me over stop you. Olympic. Okay, let me let me but, let me educate you. Okay, let me tell you something because that is not the case, sir. Even though they had so-called advanced weapons, that's not the reason why they dominated us here and the Africans over there. You know how they dominated us. They dominated us by playing coon sectors against the rest of society. Even over here in the Americas, the black Aboriginal people who mixed in with the Africans who were brought over, who became their own tribal group, the red natives were used as buffers to help them fight us. When black people would fight them and go back and retreat, it was the red Native Americans who would let the the white colonizers know where we were hiding in certain swamps in certain areas. So we were sold out by a lot of the Mongolian looking Native Americans, just like Africans over there. One tribe sold out another tribe all over Africa. That's the real reason why they were able to get a leg up. They used deception. So it wasn't anything so technologically advanced by them. They just understood how to use deception and how to play on people's weaknesses, which was division. Uh, okay, and they were able to take advantage of that division with their technologically advanced militaries. Okay, if you're divided and there's less of you, you're disadvantaged militaristically. But if you have weaponry like steel, machine guns, gunpowder, you can take advantage of your divided. Then why did Haiti, then why did Haiti, who did not have any technological advances, beat all the major European armies in 1804? 
Haiti was using the same weaponry that the European counterparts had that they were fighting. Then you contradict it yourself. They, they did not. They did not run at the Europeans without swords, without guns, without without any of the weapons. How did they the get all the weapons? How did they get the weapons first? You had to get the took, weapons first. They, they revolted and took away, took it away from the French masters. Revolted how? Happened. So they revolted with no weapons. I'm saying they used the same weaponry that. But they had to the get the weapons first. No, 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 no. It don't work like that, brother. You can't talk about somebody having all of these technologically advanced weapons and then some people with no weapons took your shit. It don't work like that. They, they took their stuff. You're, you're misunderstanding. I'm not misunderstanding anything. The Haitians who didn't have any weapons took the Europeans' weapons and used them against them. That's that's what I just said. No, it's not what you said, and brother. The, because okay. you keep talking about <laughs> they have to have technological advances and all of that. They didn't have any technological advances when they started. They had a code. Yes, but they used the European technology. The cross. Okay, you're babbling, sir. Weaponry. <laughs> Now you're just saying corner, anything. You're, pinned and you, you're, you're saying anything, sir. You're just saying anything. You're, you're just saying you're, anything at this you're point. You're being intentionally dense. At the you're point saying anything. Case. You you're you're just saying anything at this point, and you know you're no, just no, you're, you're low key trolling. You're cornering. You're trolling. No, I'm not trolling. No, 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 no. You're trolling. You you're not cornering your anybody with trolling. What you know what you're saying doesn't make any sense. You know what you're saying doesn't make any sense. You're being intentionally dense, sir. Uh, okay, you're, at this point, you're just wasting my time. I'm just, have a nice day. All right, there you go. Time wasting babble. Time wasting babble. All right. This is why they want to get around our circles and waste time. They want to get around our circles and sit up here and waste time with, with tether babble. Okay, this nonsense. We I kept asking him, what are the technical technological advances of Europe? Well, they got weapons. They got technological advances in weapons. Okay, then why did the Haitians get them? Well, the Haitians had technological weapons. No, they didn't. Yes, they did. They took the, the white supremacist weapons. This is circular tether babble. Circular tether babble, ladies and gentlemen. Z- making zero sense and he this was troll babble straight up and down troll babble and this is the problem a lot of people get in our circles and try to waste time babbling they try to get in our circles and waste time with that nonsensical babbling all right let me get some more calls in here and it, it, look I, 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 we talk about that all the time time wasting tethers they love getting in our circles, just talking nonstop, contradicting themselves, tripping on their words, getting backed up and then trying to troll their way out of it. Stop it. Let's get one more call in here. What's up? Who's calling? Come on, they had machine guns. They didn't have no machine guns back then. They had machine guns. Machine guns are relatively new. They, they had machine guns. And they, uh, stop. All right. What's up? Who's calling? Hello? Yes, sir. Who's calling? Hey, what's going on? This is Jay from Miami, Florida. All right, where you from? Where's your family from, Jay? My family's from uh, Haiti. Yes, sir. What's on your mind, Jay? D- didn't you call up before? Yeah, like man. You- okay, you hold on. Let me get some uh-huh. people. Oh, sound like Jay called up before. Hold on. Let's let me get some new people in here. All right, let me get some new people in here. One more. Let me get one more <laughs> call in here. What's up? Who's calling? Okay, well, my name is Looney. Looney, where you calling from, sir? Okay, Frederick, Maryland. Okay, where are you from originally? Okay, I'm from Nigeria. 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 So what's on your mind, sir? Yeah. Okay, um, I've been listening to you all day, I have to be very honest. And this is it. Um, I do agree with you that um, immigrants actually, uh, they owe a gratitude to their host country. Mm-hmm. Yes, I do agree with that. Mm-hmm. And that is supposed to be all over the world. All over the world, all immigrants owe that gratitude to their host country and the people. Now back to uh, the United States. <clears throat> we as immigrants, we owe that to not only the black, whether it's um, foundational black Americans or no, not only them, but to every liberal immigrant friendly american white or black 
then why I, are I okay? Even believe, okay, so I, why I even believe the liberal immigrant friendly white, the Bernie Sanders people and all that? I even believe that they outnumber you guys because these people that you're talking about. They outnumber the blacks, in my own opinion, because I know you guys are in the minority. And you agreed to that when you were talking to the South African guy this afternoon, when you told him that why didn't they do for Mandela, and he told you, okay, why didn't you guys do for Dr. King what you're asking us, what you're saying we should have done for Mandela? You said you know you're in the minority. I just think that the white liberals, Immigrant friendly liberals, I think you you have belittled them, and I think they deserve some more respect. It's not all about the black Americans. Okay. These people have number you. You are a minority. So what happens to their own vote? Okay. You are so, a minority, so, and so are your votes. Okay. So you're saying it's the white liberal or the immigrant liberal? Is that what you're saying? That the that white, the white. Immigrant friendly oh. liberals also have to be appreciated. Okay, so it's why not just this, this gratitude is not just for the black Americans. The immigrant friendly liberal, that's the person you have to, yes, think. the white, the white ones. Okay, so why just do you uh, oh. have done anything for us? Who who hasn't done nothing for you? I said, your votes alone couldn't have done anything for us without them. And you need to understand that. Okay, do you understand that the reason you can come here and become a citizen is because of foundational black Americans fighting for the 14th Amendment? Well, everything comes down to the last individual vote. And you can't force anybody to vote. Even if they fought for it, somebody's out there preaching, campaigning, I'll do this and that for immigrants. But it was foundational black... Hey! It was foundational black Americans sacrificing and fighting these white supremacists in order to get that implemented. It wasn't just the vote. We fought them. Then the hey. Of okay, let, let's get something clear, brother. I'm letting you talk. Okay. Do not cut me off. We talking. Cut that bullshit out. Okay. Let's talk, but don't cut me off. I'm trying to teach. I'm trying to dialogue with you. Okay, it it was foundational black Americans who created a grassroots movement where they risked their lives and even died to implement the 14th Amendment into the Constitution. That's the reason why you can become a citizen by coming over here, um, having a kid. If you're born here, you're a citizen. That is 100% because foundational black Americans died for that. White liberals didn't give a shit. It was us putting it on the line. In 1965, it was foundational black Americans it was not white liberals. White liberals didn't give a shit about y'all. They didn't really want you over here, and they don't no, want you. No, you need, you, need, you need to stop saying that. That's exactly why I called. I don't like it when you say that. Don't say white liberals don't give a shit about us. They didn't want you over here in the I, 60s? You see, I've been in this country for like four years, and I can tell you I've met more immigrant-friendly white liberals in this country than black. Oh, Lord. I can tell you that for sure. So don't say that. You are spreading the wrong narrative and dangerous one when you say that. Keep, stop saying they don't give a damn about us. It's not fair. You, you can't say that. Are you caping for white people, sir? I'm not. I, what I'm telling you is this. You keep saying all day, okay, um, these people, they, they don't respect us enough. We brought them here. It's because of us that they are here and all that. And I keep asking myself, you guys are in the minority. What are you talking about? How about all these white liberals that are immigrant friendly as well? Do you mean their votes don't count? Do you mean what they did don't count? No, you can't do that. I'm Nigerian, but hey, I've been here for four years. And every day, I'm, I, I, and, I, and I can tell you, I've met more than immigrant friendly white Americans than black. So I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, so the white liberals, you got to thank the white liberals for helping you get over. Uh, exactly. As much as we thank the blacks that you've been advocating all day. So why don't weren't, why weren't, like us. don't say they don't give a fuck about us. That is a lie. 
Why weren't white? Okay, why don't are you like not living in white neighborhoods then? What do you know where I'm living? You I ain't live in you, Westboro, you ain't in a white neighborhood. You're not in a white I'm neighborhood. From Frederick, I live in Westboro, Pennsylvania. You are not and you are white. not living in a white neighborhood in large numbers. It might be one individual Sambo, but you are not living in white See? neighborhoods in large numbers. Don't tell Even that if lie. I'm living in a black neighborhood. That, Don't tell that lie. Walk that what what city you in again? Wait, 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 wait. What city you in again? I said I'm calling you from Frederick, Maryland, but I live in Waynesboro, Pennsylvania. Waynesboro. Where are my Waynesboro, right Pennsylvania neighbor. people in the chat room? Waynesboro, Pennsylvania. That's a white neighborhood. Waynesboro, my, my Pennsylvania people. Are there a bunch of immigrants living among white people in Waynesboro? Let me talk to my my my. No? Yes, I'm here. I'm talking to my people in the chat room. I don't know that area. My people from Pennsylvania, are there a bunch of immigrants living with white people in that area? My people are going to chime in Let right now. You. Hold in on. a white neighborhood, 85% white. How many, of, how many immigrants live there? I can count on my, finger, on my, on my two hands. Uh, is, oh, a, a handful, like a, you and your family, basically. And a few people. Uh, yeah. You you and your family. So not not yeah, a bunch of you. So I you're, you're proving my point. Somebody said they used to, I'm, I'm looking at the chat room now. They're saying you lying your ass off. Some people are saying it's not a bunch of immigrants who live over there in that area. They're saying you are lying. Your, not a bunch of black ones. They're saying, yeah, it ain't no black immigrants living over there. That's what I thought. That's, That's what, what I said. I said I live in a white neighborhood. That's what I said. I'm not lying. I said I live in the white neighborhood. But it's not a bunch of black folks. Uh, it's not a group of black immigrants living over there. They don't let y'all live among no, them in large numbers. No, I don't. I don't. There are no, there are, there are no immigrants there. Just me and uh, two or three other families. My family and two or three others. That proves my I'm point, you, sir. I live among white people. That proves my point. A lot of you are not living among white people like that. If they were so great. You're just happy because you get to live among white people as an individual, sir. That's called cooning. You see, you see, Tariq, Tariq, I, 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 I like I said, I listen to you all listen, day. Listen, sir. And the sir. only reason why I've been trying to call to reach you is this. You're thing caping you, for white people. You said, you said it again. Listen, that listen, white it's folks don't give a damn it, about us. That is wrong. Then it's why wrong did you? Okay. How was that dangerous, sir? Because it wasn't it's white folks helping you immigrate over here. It's okay. It wasn't white people white helping people you immigrate don't here. Like immigrants. It wasn't not white. Pe okay, hold hatred. on. It wasn't white people. Uh, you don't have to cape for white people, dude. They got. They can cape for themselves. It wasn't white people helping you get here, dude. No, see, it's the immigration. The you, immigration. The immigration law that helped it's you get here. Stop you talking. Just, no, it was foundational. Black Americans fighting. It was foundational black Americans fighting to get you here. There was a zero policy to get y'all over here before we fought to do it. And no, white people, that, yes, that it was, yes, it was, yes, it was. That they, is not they, true. They we did have, not. We have white liberals that fought the Liberals my that ass. They true. weren't trying to get you over here like that. And you, they don't, still don't want you over here like that. That's why a bunch of you don't live among you them. You are lying. You are lying. You Paris, prove my point, lying. sir. You You're prove my point. Hatred. Where is the neighborhood? Where is the neighborhood with a bunch of you Nigerian immigrants living with whites? A bunch of you. Where is the neighborhood? Don't get quiet now. Where is the neighborhood with a bunch of you living with white people? Hello. Now he hung up. Doing all that tether babble. Caping for and this is what we're talking about. Y'all come over here with y'all lips puckered up, ready to find the first white ass you can kiss. Leave these white people alone. Don't say that. That is hateful to the white people. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is why foundational black Americans are like, why are we supporting immigration? Why are we supporting immigration, ladies and gentlemen? Let me get another call here. What's up? Who's calling? Hi, my name is Melissa. How are you, dear? Good. You want to What's on your mind? I am an FBA, but I'm married to a non-FBA. <laughs> You're non-FBA? I'm I am FBA, but I'm married to a non-FBA. Oh, okay. where's your husband from? Uh, he's he's upstairs, but he supports you to 100. percent Now, where's he from, dear? Where's he from? He's from Haiti. Okay, got Sorry. it. Sorry, got it, got it. <laughs> so, 
let me give you experience that I had as a non FBA going to a Haitian wedding. Oh Lord, oh. I get I get there. He's from Florida. And I get there and you would swear I was a white woman. Cause I get I I walk up there with my husband and they're like, Ah, she not she not Haitian. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I know that. I'm from Louisiana. I yeah, I know. Mm. Yeah. But I'm still black. Right, right, black, right, black. right. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so I'm sitting there like, excuse me, I am still black, but you're not hash I, Yeah, I still understand that too. Yeah, yeah. But I am still black. So that tribalism that you talk about is very ingrained. And it's a situation with this mom because she didn't, you know, she was like, you either marry Haitian or, you know, just so, like, it was a problem. It was almost like I had to get vetted by everybody in the family before I actually met her. So I would be welcomed. I'm black. Hello. I guess it didn't matter. Yeah, man. <laughs> and I'm sitting here going, you so then I finally get the welcome. It's like, hey, but I'm, I'm sitting here like, dude, I'm black. So what does it matter that I'm not Haitian and I'm getting shunned by all the Haitian women? And I'm, I'm like, Lord, I said, oh, this is difficult. Wow. And then right, let, me, let me get some more calls. Here. Thank you. Sister. This, this is about to just go on and on. You said the same thing multiple times. So thank you so much, sister. Let me get some more people. All right. Let me get more people here. What's up? Who's on the phone? Who's calling? Hello? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is um, this is Caleb from um, from Philly. I'm FBA, but can I make a comment about what um about what the brother? I think he was from Nigeria, but he said he was living in Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I live in Philly. I'm not sure what part of Pennsylvania he was from, but um, Southwest Philly is where a lot of African immigrants live. And I just want to say, first off, I feel like, and you say this as well, but just because um, you know, for every Every one African that comes over here that's cooning is probably more that's, that's you know, that's, that's riders and is ready to just work together to want to wanna defeat um, white supremacy. But what I was going to say is that sentiment about, oh, well, we owe more of our loyalty to these white people yeah. than we do to y'all. That's something that I've the encountered a lot. Because, you know, I'm, I go, I got a lot of friends that's African, um, even though I'm SBA. Um, but one thing that he, one thing that this old head said to me in an African restaurant when I was down there in Southwest, they was watching, um, I think it was CNN or MSNBC. And he kept saying, yo, it's so good that we got Trump out of there because Joe Biden is such a good man. He's such a good man. And I checked him and I was like, yo, what are you, what are you talking about? Joe Biden is a good man. Like when you see him and you see Trump, you see in the same person. You see in the same government, you just falling for the rhetoric that they feeding you. And he tried to sun me like, oh, I'm older than you. I've been in this country longer than you've been alive. But I was just trying to give him the game like you might be getting you're like you're getting played by these. Like, There's people. always two sides. A lot of y'all come over here and you don't connect with black Americans. Right. If you connected with black Americans, we would be able to tell you, yo, this like this is the game. This is how these white people are trying to play you. This, these are the type of games that they play. But a lot of them come over here. They live in their own communities, which, like you said, is not near no white people. It's no, there's no African immigrants that have a large population in a white neighborhood. Exactly. And, and that, that's why that dude kept babbling, because he knew that. And I kept trying to yes. pin him down. And he kept trying to run away from that. He knows good and well. And all these white people's asses he's kissing, they don't let them live in those neighborhoods in large yes. numbers. And I don't even think he lives yes. in a white neighborhood, by the way. I'm thinking, I think he's capping too. But yeah, they know yes, that. that's cap. I'm trying to tell you. And also, even like in Philly, Southwest Philly, I'm not, and this is not being disrespectful to anybody who lives in Philly, but like I live in North Philly with a lot of black people. Our neighborhoods are real clean. Our neighborhoods, we got businesses popping. Like, it's really nice. The, the, a lot of the African population wants to stay segregated from us because they think, you know, they feed into those lies like, oh, black Americans, they lazy. We don't want to be around them. But if we were to come together, we could really, you know what I mean? We could really get this thing popping and you could learn a lot from us because 
we've been here. We know the layout. We know how to get stuff cracking. We know how to, um, you know, host events or do this and, and make money and do things like that. Y'all could learn a lot from us if you just don't um, have this, you know, like a kind of like a hate and a despising for us. Real talk. Me? Thank you for the call, but let me get some other calls. Here. Yeah. Good call from my brother from Philly. Shout out to that brother. What's up? Who's calling? Philly. Hello. Hello. Oh, hi. Uh, there's a lag. I'm sorry. Yes. What? Um, I was, I was calling um because I really wanted to get on that dude. He pissed me the hell off. Yeah. First of all, I'm from Boston. I'm a Haitian American. Yes, ma'am. Um, at first I thought he said he was Haitian, but then he said he was Nigerian. First of all, for one, um, why should we be thanking white people, the people who enslaved you, for bringing whatever? Yeah, I mean um, his his logic was all we got to thank liberal white people. What nigga? Please, boy, man, that that white worship is insane, dude. And I'm glad to have had the people hear it for themselves because when we talk about it, it's like they no, think we're exaggerating. He's a, he's a, he's Nah, he's a coon. He's a coon straight up. I've talked to people like him before, and I've had had debates with people like him. I'm like, listen, these white people don't give a shit about you. First of all, let me tell you that dude right now, if you're listening right now, they do not give a fuck about you. They will call the police on you at any given moment. So you caping for white people because they treating you nice for that one time, but I promise you, go ahead and try to date their daughter. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and try to date their daughter. See what happens. As a let, me, let me get some more calls. Hey, thank you so much, beloved. I gotta get, I'm got to get out of here in a few minutes. Let me get a lot of quick calls. What's up? Who's calling? Hey, Terry. It's um, Majada calling. I'm from Bangladesh. I just wanted to say I love your show and everything. I watch it every day. Yes, ma'am. And I just thought the um the guy that came on your show with the government <laughs> it was so funny and it was so hilarious and the way you were just singing it and he was just singing on it i think i should do a song one day to be honest Whoa, I the damn <laughs> government they sing the same <laughs> song that's a golden oldie the, the, the government uh, stop anyway the government Thank you so much. Let me get one more call. The, the, the same old golden old the government. God damn, this brother. Hello? Hey. Hello? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, brother, you got to turn your, your computer down or something, brother. What's up? Okay. This is DB from Brooklyn. Uh, what's your name, sir? DB. D from, from Brooklyn. DB. Where are you from, DB? Are you non FBA? I'm not SBA. My family's from Panama. There you go. So I'm the first. I think it's a lot of uh, Africans on here, but I'm the first like Hispanic background, yeah. black Hispanic. Yes, yes. And I, it's one point that I think that immigrants are missing because the, the, the whole conversation started uh, what benefits um, FBA with yeah. immigrants. Mm-hmm. But I think the point that's being missed is if FBA gets reparations and we on code as immigrants with FBA, wouldn't that help immigrants as well as long as you on code the same way they see um, the benefits when they get here that uh, FBA established helping them? Why don't they see reparations? In the same way, as if because yeah, a good um, question. Good, yeah, because it's something that they can't get. It, it, they so many people have gotten so much stuff from us. They feel completely entitled. Meaning, anything we get, they're supposed to automatically be first in line to get some of it too. That's why a lot of them have a problem with us claiming our FBA status because that automatically exclude them. So when we start talking about being FBA, what, what is that shit, nigga? FBA, that is bullshit. We all want people because that excludes them automatically. When we start talking about any crumb specific for us that nobody else is going to get, everybody wants to cry foul. Now, let's see who this person is. Look like they're calling from an anonymous number. So this might be some trolling. What's up? Who's this? Flex, this is food from the headquarters of Kuhn, Sambos, and all of them. As he put himself, Flex. Now, Flex. Now, wh what country are you calling? What, sure. what country are you calling from, sir? I'm calling from the eastern side of Africa, Flex. Put the foot on their neck. Don't lead them. 
these samples, they go over there, they act like they are better off. They are not better off. Back here, their parents have nothing. Their people have nothing. They are poor. All right. Thank you so much. My brother sounds like a uh, an African villain. This dude sounds like he's calling from a Somalian pirate ship. I don't know why the phone was sounding like that. It was very weird and scary. It was low-key scary. Was that the nigga from Captain Phillips? Hello? Hey, sister, how are you? Hey, how's it going? Hey, how are you? What? What's your name, ma'am? Uh, this is Sean. Sean. Okay, Sean, where are you from? John, 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 John. Okay, John, are you a Caucasian person? No, no, I'm from Ghana. Ghana, West okay, Africa. okay. Now, is that a, a, a now, Sean? Are you LGBT? Oh my God, no. I'm John. First of all, John. John. Okay, John. Your, okay, John. Your voice is very light. You have a very feminine voice. That's not to question your sexuality. Um, why is your voice so light? Are you a small person? Because if you're a big burly nigga with a voice like this, I'm going to say, to be real, I'm a little uncomfortable. Well, I'm I'm a 5'11 guy, so. Okay. Uh, take that as well. Okay, so what's on your mind, John? Yeah, I mean, uh, I just wanted to call in and just, you know, say that, you know, we, we shouldn't be fighting with each other, right? Um, Africans, African Americans, foundational, you know, FBAs. We, you know, we can be, we can have similar backgrounds and we can also be different. And our differences are what make us unique. And we don't really need to fight, you know. Um, Africans are not entitled, as you said we are. Africans, you know, we we really work we really work hard. Um, I'm here in Nashville. I worked hard. I came to the U.S. for college. Um, and now I work here in Nashville. And I think, you know, okay. that may have been because, you know, people or FDAs work hard to help, you know, Africans come here to the U.S. But it, it, two things can exist at the same time, right? FDAs can be so good and could be foundational and Africans can also be, you know, smart and come here and get jobs. And it doesn't mean that Africans are taking jobs away from African Americans. You know, it's it, a lot of things can be true at the same time. And there is no But you know that's not the narrative. Story. Okay, let's let's be clear. That's not the narrative that you're taking jobs from foundational black Americans. That's some that's a straw man argument that you guys keep putting out there. But I I, I I hope that's not the argument um, because I was on Twitter and then I saw, you know, what was going on and I just decided to jump on this call. You know, African-Americans are smart. I, I work with a lot of African-Americans. My my friends here in Nashville are African-Americans, right? I I just came from hanging out with African-Americans. Like, <laughs> we, we shouldn't have to hate each other. It, that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. And... It doesn't have to be like that, right? It, we, we don't have to divide ourselves. That's 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 what the white man wants. <laughs> you know, that's that's what people like that want, right? right. Um, we really have to re- recognize ourselves for who we are. History is terrible, and history has brought us to where we are now. And we can be forward looking and figure out how to, you know, amend things. And I I I, I think that's how. Um, things should be um but a few things i wanted to talk about you know i've been on this call for about 30 minutes first of all we don't have junky fucking outfits i i think you mentioned that prior you mentioned that you know people come or you know africans come to america and you know they go to elementary school with junky fucking outfits and i made note of that right like it's our culture those are our clothes so you know, it's, it's, it's just... Like you, some, you're going to get roasted, man. Right. And, I, and part of um, foundational black American culture, everybody gets roasted. So y'all got to eat that. Y'all get very sensitive. Y'all got this thing yeah. where you're not and, supposed and, to get roasted. And, Everybody's going to yeah. get roasted, bro. Yeah. yeah. And I, I thank you so much for saying everyone gets roasted because it's the FBA culture. That's the same way in African culture, everyone gets roasted, right? And so by that same virtue, then Africans also roast African-Americans, right? Just as we roast white people, 
um, and just as we, we, we roast Americans and Europeans. So we roasting African Americans is the same way you just said black uh, SDAs roast Africans. And so it, it shouldn't really be that bad. It, it shouldn't stick out as much as it's sticking out okay. right now. Okay. All right, if thank you so much. I, okay, he's kind of babbling. I don't know where he's going, man. Okay, I'm yeah, okay. All right, I don't know where he was going, but respect to him, he was just kind of all over the place. All right, one more call. What's up? Who's calling? Yeah, get him. One more call. Get him out the paint. Get him out the paint. <laughs> this hers from the bottom of Florida. Get him out the paint, Tariq. Yes, sir. How you doing, fam? I'm Gucci. I'm Gucci. First of all, I'm from the bottom of Florida. We surrounded by Haitians. Them Haitians don't rock with us unless they want money. And the dude, I thought you was paying that dude who was sounding crazy. But then when he said, I've been in America for 40 years, <laughs> then I knew, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, I get you. Man. I get you. Man. All this, oh, you FBA. One dude said, I'm, I'm FBA, but I'm from Panama. <laughs> How you FBA? <laughs> I'm FBA. All my grandparents are from here. No doubt. I don't let, have. Hold, let me get. Let me get. Let, let me speed it up. Shout out to the brother. I'm trying to get the calls out real quick. I'm gonna get one more FBA brother on here or sister to speak their piece before we go. What's up? Who's calling? Hey, this is Jay from Connecticut. Jay, are are you, you said F. Are you FBA or non FBA? Yeah. Not. I want a non FBA no. person. Yeah, I'm non FBA. Yeah. Uh, where I'm you from? Dominican. Jay? Dominican. Oh, okay. Uh, let, let me get some yeah. people from the from from um. From Africa, let me get them on because see, those are the ones who seem to have a lot of pushback. Because uh, I really want to get them on. What's up? Who's calling? Lex. What's up, man? We got a non FBA brother right, here. Not... I, my bad, bro. No, nah, I'm oh, okay. Got to get non FBA one. Let me get somebody from Nigeria, as a matter of fact, because the Nigerians were all on Twitter. I think I'm still trending now. They had a lot to say. Yeah, I'm, not. I'm giving them an opportunity to spit now. What's up? Who's calling? Hello? Yes. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. What's your name? Uh, my name is Emmanuel. Okay. Um, and I've been trying. It's my 30th attempt to get through to you, and I'm glad I did. Um, so thank you for the conversation. Now, I think, Emmanuel, where are you uh, from? I'm, where are you from? Yeah, I'm Nigerian. I've there been you. here for... Uh, 14 years now. Yeah. Okay, good, good. Okay, and you're in Connecticut, right? Yeah. I'm sorry? You're, you're in Connecticut? No, 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 I'm in Maryland. Maryland, okay, got it, go ahead. Okay, so what's on your mind, sir? So, I mean, there's so much to unpack here, but I think you have started a very sensitive conversation that's been lurking in the background, um, and, you know, they say a good way to help a wound heal is to expose it to sunlight. So I think, you know, this conversation is all in good spirit. I, I, I just want to say one thing, and I know you're waiting to take all the callers. You asked a question on Twitter, and I've never heard anyone try to address that question, which is, what do FBA get from immigration? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put forth um, a controversial response. I suspect you will not agree with it. Oh, I got to hear but, this. Well, I mean, it's not. So America is an aggressively capitalist system, and capitalist systems um, respond to just one thing, which is, you know, and I'm not, I hope I don't sound like I'm preaching or lecturing, I, I don't intend to sound that way, which is that, you know, you, the only way to break out of a system of oppression is to make it up the corporate, you know, the, you know, the American dream to make money, essentially. Um, immigration can help in certain ways for FBA, and this is what I think. For example, um, because these traditional white spaces in corporate America are so difficult to get in for, you know, for reasons of systemic racism, um, the more that there are black people in those spaces, whether they are FBAs or immigrants, the more better it is for all of black people in America. Because, you know, a rising tide lifts all No, boats. God. I do not begrudge you. Sorry? Lord, okay. okay. I, I do not begrudge you looking out for FBAs. That's a natural instinct. 
But I do think that the idea that uh, black immigrants are part of the problem. But you never gave a benefit, sir. You never gave a benefit. You just kind of talked around and babbled a little bit. But you never actually gave a benefit that we get. Oh, from, you oh, never oh, gave the benefit. Oh, I'm sorry. So let me try to say that quickly. Let me say that quickly. Let me say it quickly. To so the, the point, point. Just to the point. To the, just that, to the point. Just to the point, yeah. sir. Yeah. Yes. The more that there are, uh, and I don't know how far back to go. I do the, agree with you on one point. Uh, that, okay, I answer that question. Yeah, I'm that, sorry. That, I don't even understand what yeah. you mean. How that benefits us? The more are you say, the more people who flood over here to get in corporate zones. That's going to help foundation of Black Americans. That makes zero sense, sir. Well, corporate, corporate limited in a way, but the more that there are black people in America, evening up the numbers, both demographically, just in terms of voting, voting critical mass, but also just in the working population critical mass, also in the number of people who are making it up, quote unquote, the American dream ladder, the better it is for all black Americans and black people in America, whether they're FBAs or not. And that's you have point. not given the benefit, uh, sir. You have not given what the benefit, the benefit is. That's the benefit, though. What's the benefit? My Just you, everybody is, being all together in one spot? How does that benefit us? Because, uh, and you, your framing is slightly different from the way I'm framing. I'm just what repeating what, I'm what you're saying, saying right? sir. I'm trying to see what the benefit what, so, is. Okay. So let's put it this way. Oh, now, Lord. And this is a grudge that I agree with, right? Affirmative, act, affirmative, uh, affirmative action policies were put in place for FBA Americans, right? But because there are a lot of immigrants who are coming in who seemingly have, you know, like you, you made this point 30 to 40 minutes ago. There's just more people to come into this. Point being that because that competition is high and a lot of immigrants are getting into those positions much more than it would be if it was just FBA's going for the okay okay I, I just hung up guys i don't want to hear babbling guys god he has no answer that's a long-winded way of saying he just has no answer it just gets into a whole bunch of babbling because there is no answer and that's what we've been getting in all of these spaces a lot of babbling if it's not just nonsensical babbling it gets into trolling because everybody knows there is really no benefit. Just keep it a buck. That's why everybody keeps talking in circles. So just keep that in mind, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, y'all, we've been here for a long time. Thank you guys for tuning in. Much respect to the family. Go get the book, Foundation of Black American Race Bader at um, Amazon.com. You can get an autographed copy at OfficialFBA.com. Get the Arutasussi t-shirts at Arutasussi.com. Go to HiddenColorsFilm.com to get all the the movies. Go to BuckBreakingMovie.com to get the BuckBreaking film. And I'm going to holler at you guys this Sunday. You, you guys be good. Holler.